This podcast was brought to you by our patrons at patreon.com forward slash APWSTR. Become a patron for only a dollar or more and get access to episodes early and ad free, plus get exclusive content throughout the month. We're going to do the podcast. I'm going to randomly check in on this DM to see if she's sent anything. All right. Yeah. So, okay. So for, for those of you at home, uh, about 30 minutes ago was the last time Sarah tweeted. Uh, Sarah got a tweet about an hour ago. I got a DM, which Twitter immediately was like, we think this is spam. So they wouldn't let me see the image. And then I clicked on it and it let me see the image. And I'll read it out, actually. Yeah, let's read it out. This is the intro. We, <sighs> okay. We need context. This is the thing. Okay. Oh, it's still hidden. It says message hidden due to suspicious content. Oh, so I'm already sus. Already sus. Um, and if the person is watching this, then like, um, it's, Dox them that's right why now. I'm sus. That's why I'm sus. Put their, put their um, put their uh, no. Even if I post name. it, I'm gonna uh, blur put, it out uh, right here. Put it on the fifth. The fifth <laughs> Lacroix can is gonna go up here. They go. Thought I'd ask you something. Crying face emoji. I also hate their amount. Yeah, of why emojis. are they using a crying face emoji? That's weird. God bless you, person. I like your vibe, and I like your um, your. You know, pro trans vibe and everything. Yeah. You use too many emojis. Thought I'd ask you something crying face emoji, but a bit worried you might take it the wrong sort of way. And then the like, eh, emoji. And then I sent back one question mark because I was very sus. And they go, it's a bit embarrassing on my behalf, but let me just put my baby sister to sleep. We'll reply back properly in a moment. And then sparkle emoji. And then I, I said, yeah. okay, I feel like this is spam. And they go, oh, no, no, it's not. I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. I get a lot of spam because I, I don't know. And that's where we're at right now. That's where we're at. I'm waiting on the reply. We're waiting on the reply since 30 minutes. It's been we're 30 fucking out. minutes. How we're long does it take out. to put your fucking baby sister to sleep? God damn and then, it. Yeah, that's when I'm theorizing that it, putting her down to sleep for good. I, I'm on pins and fucking needles. Gotta get the what it is that I'm gonna be taking the wrong yeah. way in a couple of minutes. So leave a comment down below what you think the wrong comment's gonna be. Is it gonna be about okay. Sarah? Okay, you got okay. So this is what I think it's gonna be. Yeah, four choices. The classic. You look like Dylan Sprouse. You look like Dylan I Sprouse. I don't think I do now that I've gained weight. I don't think that has happened anymore unless people have said that. Uh, but it's always there. You look a. like Dylan Sprouse. Um, B. Why do you wear a beanie all all the time? You look like Tim Pool. Uh, <laughs> C. C. Right, C. Why do you put a microphone in front of your face all the time? Are you trying to hide your double chin? Yes. Uh, or D. Or D. Uh, here are my titties. <laughs> and then a titty pic. <laughs> or you know, I, I think groovy, you. you know, I think fucking... you would eat pussy good. I don't know. <laughs> 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 Why do you? Hear, uh, I, you know, something that is like blatantly like does not understand that I'm pansexual and in a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't wait to find out. And put I your think put, your, it would be really funny because this person runs like a pro equality blog, which is a good thing. I which is great. Say, yes. I love their, yes. but like they're very much an ally, and they have like the gay flag and their um the rainbow flag and their fucking name and like all this shit yeah i would be really funny if they said like you're a fucking f slur like you know like you dress like an f slur you dress like a dyke or something i think that would be really funny because i really want to expose them about this shit yeah because i'm like what would i take the wrong way that would like ruin my day (laughs) and it's it's literally just like uh i th- i think you're stupid uh i think your takes are bad uh i think you look like shit you shouldn't have picked up mentally ill chicks at the phoebe bridges concert I think why that's do they have to ableist. be mentally ill because she's depressed like like you, she writes depressing music that's why yeah <laughs> fucking you know i think so, you're a misogynist or yeah i think you're a fake ally something like that I'm waiting for it. We're waiting for it, and we we have we got to do a show though, so we're gonna yeah. We gotta we're gonna we're gonna keep you guys posted. <laughs> we're gonna put a little we're gonna put like one of those news banners in the lower third, <laughs> <laughs> being like it has been thirty it's been thirty minutes it's been forty five minutes, minutes since since Sarah has gotten a text. <laughs> so this is a real person. I thought it was a spam bot. It's, it's a real probably person. a real person. Yeah. Yeah. It would be just so funny if it was just like a bot that was trained to do all this shit and it's just like trying to get your IP address or but some like, shit. Yeah, I'm like, shit, man. God. We'll, fit, we'll keep it posted. And I just want to know. And we're, we'll, 
<laughs> you're either hitting on me or you're either you're gonna make gonna, me, gonna, gonna fucking gonna... talk shit about me. Yeah, that's, which those I are hope two to options. God you're gonna talk shit about me because if you do hit on me, it is there's like two degrees away from like sexual assault. If you send me titties, <laughs> that's sexual assault. I don't want to see them. I don't want to see any titties. Don't send me any titties. I don't want them. Uh, I want to see can, your fucking um, titties. You can DM me titties at Joshua Channel. That's what. See, now that's solicited. So now you can't yeah, send Josh that's, that's, titties. That's legally, you're allowed to. And also, if you send Josh titties, I will look at them. So <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be upfront about that. Start the show. <laughs> we did it, guys. 19 kids died two days ago. <laughs> oh, and no. And we're lightening the mood. Oh. <laughs> I just wanted to be something like, you don't really care about those kids. <laughs> you don't really care about those kids. <laughs> Hi everyone. Oh fucking, Welcome to hello, a podcast, podcast will save, save this relationship. relationship. I'm Josh, she, him. I'm Sarah, she, her. And that was called the LaCroix trick where uh, I, I open up a LaCroix on the That's first a second. A bubbly. Same You're difference. fucking wrong. Same diff, all right? You fucked it up. It's literally, it's the same size it. can, all right? You it's fucked there. it. It's fucked. Uh, this is called the seltzer trick and basically what it is is I open it up. Yeah. And that disorients Sarah from being able to say her pronouns first. It's true. Have you said your pronouns yet? No, I didn't. You can say them if you want to. Yeah, I, you I did. Oh, okay. You weren't listening. As per usual, this is <laughs> example number 500,000 yeah. something of Josh not listening to Sarah. How are you doing, Sarah? I'm doing good. Well, I'm not doing good because of this fucking DM <laughs> from this person. Yeah. I that got, we still haven't gotten an answer. In between the three minutes of that intro to here, we still have no answer. <laughs> so I will update everybody. <laughs> every 30 minutes. There every will be 30 an minutes, intro we're going to fucking. A, a, quick, a quick flash update. We got to get a soundboard and it's just the news fucking. <laughs> <laughs> like they have on know, um man. they have it on um so wait uh, well, is there's the... your problem oh yeah where they just have that new segment yeah, yeah. But okay what were you asking um so fucking is the intro gonna be like me reading the the dms yes i think so oh, okay yeah. so now everybody knows thank everyone god everyone does know yeah everyone okay, knows yeah and there's there's a news ticker going <laughs> Good. Thank God. I'm not going to do that. That's too much work. Call down below um, if you have an idea of what (laughs) it is I'm going to be disappointed about. Just straight farming uh, (laughs) engagement. (laughs) Farming engagement to stop people from engaging with me. I want you to engage with the podcast. Do not DM me. Do not engage. Do not. (laughs) I should put that in my fucking thing. But also like I am too curious. I gotta know. I get that. what the people are saying about me. I told I told understand that. You know? Yeah. What what are, what are the hit? What's what are the hit people saying? You know? I gotta know what this person from the fucking UK, not even in my own country, <laughs> in your own country, thinks about me. They had to send a fucking signal to a fucking satellite over yeah. millions of miles just to tell me that I'm gonna take something the wrong way, and I can't wait I to can't take wait it the for wrong what it way. Is. <laughs> and you know what pisses me off about it? Yeah. Other than everything I've already said, which is yes, like 90% yeah. of the thing pisses me off. Uh, is there a right way to take whatever the thing they're going to tell me is? Because See, okay, they've think... already set it up for me to be pissed off, right? Yeah. And then if I get pissed off, they're going to be like, I knew you were going to take it the wrong way. Yeah. And then I'm going to be like, fuck you. Yeah, you <laughs> want, you set me up for this. Yeah. You're literally setting me up. To be pissed off. Yeah. I don't know. So they're probably not going to send anything because that would be... They already That's the lit. only way to hightail it out of there. And yeah. I've already come in very hot because they came in hot. Yeah, they came in hot. And they had to simmer down a little bit. I get it. Hey, Josh, I'm going to uh, call you a slur. Oh, oh, but let me go put my baby sister to bed. Why are you going to call me a slur? That's kind of stupid. Hold on. Wait, I got to I gotta put my baby sister to bed. I mean, do bed. that, but like, why you still do that? Uh, wait, hold on. I got to do this. <laughs> Sorry. Christ. What the fuck? Jesus. No more bullshit. <laughs> God. Uh, in case you guys are wondering, we are trying to delay talking about the shit that's happened in the past week. Yeah, yeah, it's oh really fucking God. sad. It's really fucking upsetting. But Jesus. this really does have the propensity to be a good episode because we could be talking about this and then this bitch could say something like, I really like your eyes. And then I could be like, fuck you. 
<laughs> like something Christ. super fucking super fucking selfish <laughs> yeah yeah god yeah i just realized we did not talk about what we we're gonna talk about at the beginning no do you want to tell them tell them what what are we gonna talk about i don't know because uh <laughs> Oh, wait, you literally don't know what we're going to talk about? What are we talk? I mean, are we going to talk about... Your birthday. And Phoebe Bridgers. Okay, are we not going to touch the, the shooting that happened? We, yeah, of course we are. Okay, alright, yeah, because there's a lot of shit. I just, I just, I just, I just had a weird, like, <laughs> that's so Raven moment where I was like, wait, did we ever talk about... I think we just assumed that, like, that's what all shit's been things? crazy okay, the past yeah, couple of I'm days. Sorry, I'm sorry, everybody. Fucking the last three days... Have been a whirlwind of emotion. <laughs> yeah, it's been fucking wild. Fucking, what is it? So... 19 kids died. 19 kids died on the, died on the 24th. Yeah. I turned 23 on the 25th. Yeah. And we went to see Phoebe Bridgers. Which is fun. And we yelled, fuck DeSantis. Oh, yeah. And gay. Those were the only two things we yelled. We at the, said gay. We said the gay word. Yeah, we yeah. said gay. And, um... It's the 26th and we're recording a podcast. Yeah, so those are the past three. Those are the three days that we find yeah. ourselves in. And um, what a world we live in, man. I, I don't know. I'm fucking disappointed in everything. Yeah, me too, man. I mean, yeah, I think it's, I don't know. I don't fucking know anymore. I am really becoming a psychopathic uh, doomer. Uh, pilled person i think in it's my hard, brain it's hard not to be right like it's just like yeah what is it fucking um so okay so like the shooting happened the the school shooting happened and i think the first numbers that came out mm -hmm. was like 14 yeah it was 14 it was 14 which is so high which is already high enough yeah, yeah. like and like I, I think i know i've talked about this before but uh we we live in orlando mm -hmm. uh, i was like 15 or 16 when polls happened and I think the first... Really? Oh, yeah, you were. I had huh? to have been, I think. Yeah. yeah. I was 18. If you were 18, then I was like 17. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, when that happened, fucking... Um, or actually, no, it would have been 16. Uh, it doesn't matter. No, you uh, would have been 18 because it was um like right in the... In the uh, wasn't it 2015? No, it was 2016. I would have been 17 then. Okay. Yeah, it was right... Well, it was right after your birthday, too. Yeah. So, so um, yeah. Pulse happened the first... um. It's always a visceral reaction, I think, with, like, the first number. Uh, Pulse was, like, it was, like, fucking eight, and then it bumped up to 50. Yeah. Yeah, and that was a, Jesus Christ, yeah. like, which within two hours of, like, me waking up, hearing the first number and then the second number. That was fucking crazy. And the fact that it's bumped up from 14 kids to 19 kids and two adults, uh, it's, um... It's a lot. It's a, it's just a fucking lot, man. And, and I keep hearing shit about the police too. Like they oh fucking, fucking lied. They lied yeah. about the body armor. They were outside. They saw him. They let him go inside. They he locked himself in a fucking classroom and uh fucking. They went inside to protect their own kids, but yeah. then wouldn't let any of their parents do go the same in to thing. protect their kids. Yeah. Um, and apparently, and it only... took them an hour to find somebody to unlock the door. Yeah. Yeah, it's fucked up. Yeah, it's absolutely fucked up. It's, um... If I let 19 people die at my job, I wouldn't have a job anymore. Yeah, literally. You'd yeah. be fired. Like, if you let one person die, yeah, I think Yeah, I you think shouldn't. I would probably be fired. Yeah, and, like, um... Did you actually know... I, don't, I didn't remember this from Pulse, and I think that's why Pulse is on my mind. Someone tweeted out that it took them three hours to get into the bathroom where the shooter was hiding mm -hmm. while the shooter was, like, actively executing people. Yeah, I remember that because people were um, pretending to be dead in the yeah, bathroom. Yeah, they had to pretend to be dead so that they wouldn't... Yeah. I, um, I, I guess... I feel like a broken record every time this shit happens. And it happens <sighs> so much, and it's like... It's so obvious the police just don't give a fuck and the powers that be that don't give a fuck. Democrats are fucking, despite having the majority, aren't doing anything to pass gun regulation. Yeah, because it's about and money. You it's know? about money and it's about, you know, they want to use it to fundraise and then Republicans yeah, we, don't care about we death. Fucking let the gun industry just take over yeah, yeah. our shit and it bred fascism. You know, and uh, now that's what we're dealing with. And uh, in America, there really is not 
when you go against a corporation, that's how late stage capitalism we are. When you go against a fucking corporation, it's not, nothing's going to change. Whatever is in the mind of a corporation or an industry that has gotten so big and so overreaching, they're not going to stop whatever it is that they're doing because it's all profit driven. It's all profit driven. I mean, that's why it's so fucking hard to get like not even in like gun, like just like transferring over to green energy has been such a fucking hassle. It it is the explanation for everything. Like yeah. it's why it was so easy for me to get a job. Like to get an interview for a new job was because all I had to do was go into an interview and say, "Hey, put me in a box. I want to put I want to be put in a box where I make you, where I get fucked over and you and you get a lot of money. Can I do that?" And they go, yeah, absolutely. Here's the fucking wage and the pay and the benefits. And you're going to be able to do that. And that's, yeah, that, that you get immediate help. And a lot of people go into interviews thinking it's about skills and it's not, it's about experience and it's about how much you're willing to deal with for a paycheck. Yeah. That's all that matters. Where's your bar and what's the (laughs) ratio of dollars to bullshit that you deal with? And I think a lot of people don't know. Well, a lot of young people, I think, that start interviewing don't know that when you go into an interview and you get on their level and you say, like, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I want to get fucked over for money. They drop all pretenses. They don't dick you around anymore. They just go, oh, thank God. Yeah, I'll shove you in a box. I'll shove you in this little box right here. (laughs) Yeah, here's your fucking outrageous pay. Yeah. That's why it's always been very easy for me to get a job is I always just go in and I go can I get fucked over? And they go, yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's all they want. Yeah. Yeah. As long as like, that's like the fucking, I guess in the broader scope, like if you, if you're, if you have a population that's willing to be put into this box, fucking, you they, have a, they want to put everybody, they want to put everyone box. in a box. Yeah. And well, I mean, the other thing that makes it very easy for me is that I'm white. Mm. I'm white. So it's, it's not, like you know there are some boxes that are not available for people of different races or sexualities or whatever i am a different sexuality but i can mask that and be straight passing you know so fucking i'm the perfect candidate for most jobs is because i'm you know these kids weren't these kids they weren't fucking leftists they weren't fucking you know radical leftists they were just fucking kids but they were brown Mm. and they were near the border god yeah and that's why cops didn't really give a shit yeah and they didn't really give a shit about that's why fucking, ice was there ice was there trying to fucking detain parents yeah yeah it's fucked up man it's just fucked up and it's blatant you know i think yeah, it's I, just obvious i grew up thinking that it wasn't as blatant i don't even know anymore maybe it was maybe it was more blatant i don't know mm. i don't know anymore i i'm just doomer pilled now I get that, yeah. I, I, I don't. I, I, I don't want to get doom repelled. You know, nobody does. I think, and I, I'm trying to actively prevent myself from becoming too doom repelled. Yeah, and I feel like I. It's really fun. It's just hard to do it. I guess it's just like it, it is. I mean, I don't know. I guess like um. I'm not a fucking, I'm not a smart person. You know, I'm not a genius. I'm not going to be able to solve this fucking, you Me know, Me neither. Thing. That's the thing. That's, it's, I'm not going to be able to do it. But I just, it's just so, I, I, I guess I just want to take the moment to remind everyone how corrupt everything is. Yeah. I guess that's my main thing. Well, I think the, our purpose, and especially what we do here on this podcast, is to create a space for people that don't have one. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. people come to us and they ask us questions about... Should I cut off my friend for disrespecting me? Should I cut off my parents because, you know, they don't, you know, I'm trans and they don't uh, treat me like a human being. And uh, we respond with, yes, you should, because. Yeah, you're not being treated like a human being. You should be treated like a human being. And that's radical. (laughs) It's radical to say that. It doesn't feel like it, but like it is. We don't feel like we're saying anything very important, but then we get messages back from people saying, you guys changed my mind that I, yeah, I do. I do shouldn't be respected like this and that's all that we can do is let people know that you need to do what you want yeah and And you you should be protected and safe yeah and of course you should be kind and respectful of other people but not 
when they're not being respectful to you. Yeah, and I, yeah. And I, I don't know, I guess that's why it's like, I don't know, I, I mean, I it's I hope it's obvious what our politics is. Yeah, duh. Uh, fucking, um, I don't know, I just keep seeing tweets and it's just so fucking obvious, like, that conservatives just don't give a shit. Mm -mm. And I just want to really make that fucking clear, that conservatives do not give a shit. Yeah. Democrats pretend to give a shit, but they only want money. And you have to... You gotta fucking push Democrats to actually do something, because they're fucking weak and fucking disorganized right now. Well, they're just... They also are being paid by the NRA. There are people on, you know, the Democrat side that are... I think it's really fucking stupid, the people that are like, it's not Democrats' fault. It's not... Which I have seen tweets of that, and I'm I like... Say that's I dumb. That's a fucking dumb thing. you're the stupidest person Democrats in the world. are at fault for this, yeah. Fucking... They could do shit right now about Biden this. Biden was literally vice president when Sandy Hook happened. Yeah. Yeah. And nothing happened fucking... Then? Almost 10 years ago. Then there's no reason. Then, yeah, they're not gonna fucking... <sighs> there's no reason to, like... No. It, could, it it literally... I, you know, fucking... Bro, they're murdering brown kids. They're outlawing abortions. And they're making it so that... Fucking everybody is like, you know... You get pregnant, you're forced to have a kid. But and then, then your you kid's gonna go, go to and school and get fucking shot at up at... At least all the brown ones will die. <sighs> fucking... Uh, how is that how, not... How, that's, that's what it is. That's literally what it what is What it now. is. How is that not what it is? It's either brown kids or uh, gay adults, you know, or fucking... Oh, yeah, and if and you're... Fucking, well, even if you're a fucking gay adult, you still get to live, just not in the body that you want. I mean, how can uh, any of us not be radicalized by this? That's my yeah, thing. Yeah, at this point, yeah. I you mean, don't get so to much, choose how you live anymore. That's, you your know... Your rights are being taken away yeah. every single day. Every single day. And also, it's being militarized against you by... Like, each other, you know? Like, fucking Tucker Carlson is getting on TV and being like, everybody should own a gun. Everybody should get out there and own a gun. And these transgenders are evil. And also, all the brown people are evil. And yeah, everybody. I'm not saying what you guys should do with those guns. Everybody white men are evil. And listen, women should not be allowed to do this. And it's fucked up that, you know, what if, what if women are doing this and blah, blah, blah. And you should uh, kill your friends. You should kill your friends. You should kill your friends. You should kill your friends. <laughs> <laughs> and like That's all it's becoming. Yeah. Yeah. And no one's going to do anything to stop it. No. There was a, you know, and like, I, I keep fucking uh, like, there's the, the, um, there's a trans person on Reddit yeah. that got caught up on a 4chan board that literally like, um. Really? Well, I mean, yeah, this, I thought I told you about this, where I was a trans person that, um... I didn't hear the full story about it. So, from what I understand, basically someone, uh, was on Reddit, they're trans, mm -hmm. and I think, I can't tell, uh, they, they look somewhat similar, I guess, to the shooter, or maybe even not, I don't know, I haven't read fully on this. Or but, I haven't even seen the shooter, I've heard his name one time. Yeah, I haven't seen the shooter, but someone, I think someone, it probably, it's probably not even like they look similar. Someone on 4chan was like... Oh, it was a trans person that shot up the school, and I have proof. Here's the photo of him. And then that got spread to all the GOP sites. And, uh, yeah, that trans person just got that uh, fucking harassed. makes me fucking sick, dude. Yeah, it's fucked up. It's yeah. evil, yeah. And, like, um, fucking, I think it was Keffels that said this is what happens when you let misinformation spread online. Yeah. And then what sucks is, like, fucking, there was, um, I don't remember if you've heard about this, but Biden was supposed to have a... Uh, misinformation or disinformation board or some shit. Really? Wow. Yeah, this was like a couple weeks ago that like it was f it was founded. I I again <laughs> I, I look at news for my job. Um, yeah. But it immediately because you know conservatives. <laughs> yeah. They saw that as uh, they do the classic 1984 bit, and it caused the fucking disinformation board to literally shut down, like be paused. That's fucking stupid. Yeah, and like I mean you know and it's like. <laughs> I I used to be like, you know, free speech is like cool. And I think free speech is cool. But I think if you have an audience and a platform and you're just spreading lies willingly, yeah. you should get punished for it. Yeah. I think that's the difference. I don't you should there should be consequences. Right. That's the that's thing. That's not even free speech. That's you you said a lie and it caused someone to get harassed. Yeah, you should be con there should be that a consequence is free for speech. that. Yeah. That is what it should be, is if you tell lies, you should have consequences. But we're now in a world where they are telling lies and there are no consequences. 
for it. And when there's a threat of a consequence, they, you know, it's free a con- speech. It's a consequence that they don't care about. It's a consequence on everyone else. Like your children dying or uh, your fucking mom, your wife dying they because literal- she's a school teacher and a fucking kid that was radicalized by some guy telling lies showed up yeah. and started shooting children. And yeah, fucking like. This and now is you what's don't have a mom or a wife. You're just fucking. You're just fucked. It's just yeah, fucked. It's just, it's not right. Nothing's happening to fucking Tucker Carlson. Nothing's happening to the fucking GOP. They're just like, oh, whatever. A brown woman died. I don't give a shit. Fucking let's go. Let's the go. Only- Turn on the lights, baby. I got a new show. Kill your kids. Kill your kids. Kill your kids. Kill your kids. <laughs> yeah, literally. And like, I don't know. The thing that gives me just like the glimmer of hope is that I'm like actually seeing people finally give a shit. People that I thought were like really not even apolitical, but like people that weren't around in 2013 that had platforms and, you know, maybe stayed away from Sandy Hook. Yeah, I've, I've seen a lot less uh, conservative children. I will say. Yeah, and it's like, you know, I, like the... the I, I just started following Tim Heidecker, and Tim Heidecker... Oh my just god, a, Tim Heidecker god. is going off. I, you know, you and need like... To, everybody needs to follow Tim Heidecker. I, I know we talk about On Cinema every week. We need to talk... Okay. Uh, Tim Heidecker so good, is man. unironically the only person giving me hope right now. <laughs> and I, that's like the weirdest thing. That's I'm, so funny. He's making fun of Tim Pool. Just every tweet now. <laughs> Just, I don't know why, but like, I'm like, yes, thank you. Someone's doing this. Thank Christ. And it's interesting because, you know, he had a character that was like the conservative guy for so he's long. he's had that for so long. But like, I wonder if, you know, he's going to actually, I mean, you know, he's kind of getting serious, quote unquote, in that he's not, you know, making his comedy in a layer of irony. You know what I mean? Yeah. He and, uh, is literally just going and being like. I'm a leftist. Fuck you. Yeah, you know, and like I'm, I, I think the more I think about it, Tim Heidegger's always been political. We watched, yeah, and we watched the George Carlin fucking documentary. Oh my god! And like, did, did we even talk about that last week? I think no. we might have. I, I mean, rem- maybe a little bit. I want to punch Stephen Colbert in the face, man. Oh my fucking god! Yes. Um, what a dumbass. I, I think there's okay. So like, I think my main. I, Okay, this is we're gonna rope everything together. Right yeah, now. we're gonna rope every little thing we're into everything. A, we're all the dots update. are gonna get connected. Is there an update? No, no update. All right, ticker. It's been forty five minutes since an update. There's not gonna be a ticker. Don't even. Oh wait, do no, a... there is. Oh fuck. Okay, hold on. We have to take a break. We have to take a pause in what I was about to say. I gotta read it out loud, or is it? Um. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, Sarah. Do you want me to read it? Do you want me to read it out loud for everybody? Do you want me to read it? I'll read it. I'll read it for everybody. I'll do it. Uh, oh. So after 45 minutes, here's the response. Here's Sarah. Okay, so... You know what? And I yelled all about this, too. I'm going to send her this money. <laughs> I'm back. Okay. Erm, um, yeah. <laughs> I don't really want to tell you a sob story and make you feel sorry for me or whatever, but I'll be honest. And I've started asking others on here as well. Are you able to pay a power cash app anything like 12 euros slash $12? I'll be able to repay it back immediately as soon as I can. My job hasn't paid me properly and got rent coming up as, and getting short on food as well. Something like 12 pounds would help massively. Uh, if you can't, honestly, it's totally fine. I can just try to find other ways, but I just thought to ask. I know it's super random. Super Rolex do random. Uh, I know we don't know each other, but honestly, if you can, great. If not, it's okay, X. Bro, this has bo- been bothering me for 45 minutes. All she wanted was $12. I don't even know this person. I don't know this person I don't even know all. how they found you, yeah. Do I give her $12? I don't care. I mean, I'm getting $2,000 tomorrow. <laughs> so who gives a shit, you know? Uh, yeah, who gives a shit? Yeah, fucking... I mean, you're gonna get twenty bucks from Patreon. Do you want your fucking twenty dollars from Patreon? To go to, I mean, I don't care. Eh, fuck it. Yeah, we're not really hurting for money. Yeah, we're good right now. So fuck, I don't give. Fuck it. We're just gonna bucks. give money to someone live on the show. <sighs> Buy heroin with it. Like I give a sh- like I give a shit. Then t- send all your two thousand dollars. Oh yeah, sure. When you say sure, sure, it's gonna be like an immediate response too. It's not gonna Cash be forty five minutes. Yeah, that's also why I want to do this. To see. <laughs> I want to see how quick it is. Jesus. <laughs> so yeah, back to the 19 dead kids, as I was saying. 
hey, can I have twelve dollars? Random person on the internet. I don't even know how they found you, Jesus. I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sure. sure whatever fuck you want. It, whatever. Get off my dick, please. <laughs> this isn't a Walmart parking lot. This is Twitter. Bro, imagine Twitter is your Walmart parking lot and you need money. Yeah, you just gotta go to random people. Does she pull the baby sister act with everyone? Probably, yeah. But it takes so long. Yeah, to make it real. We we'll just send the fucking thing, and then you can send it to like five million people, and then probably like ten of them will be like, nah, "Okay, it's, it's all part of the con, Sarah. You gotta." I gotta wait forty five minutes. Forty five minutes, and I even texted her to be like, "Hurry it up," you know, like when I was like, "Is this a scam?" I yeah. waited like fifteen minutes, and then she was like, "No," and then she didn't send it. Just ask me for twelve dollars. No, it has. It's you gotta. You gotta tell the details <laughs> it's part of the story it's all part of the okay. bit if she's difficult if she's like oh i don't have a cash app can you download Qu- didn't she uh, literally say it was a cash app quicksby or something <laughs> you know, can you download this new app can you send it to me in bitcoin i'm gonna be like no <laughs> yeah, I, yeah i'm done yeah <laughs> jesus christ all right, that's the end. All right, it's now been zero minutes since an update. <sighs> Fuck. There's not. There's not a. There's not a thir- lower thirds. I mean, I'm doing this because I'm on camera, and now you all can know that I'm a good person. But you're doing it on camera, so we don't know how sure you really I'm a, are. This I'm a great person. I'm good. I hope she spends it on alcohol or heroin or something. Whatever she's addicted to. <laughs> Whatever this is actually about, cocaine. <laughs> now I feel bad for. <laughs> <laughs> for like an hour <laughs> well it's still the intro so it has to go in yeah back to what we were saying oops back to what we were saying all right i don't want to hear <laughs> you don't want to hear, hear any more of this now i mean okay if there's a if there's a tweet save it for yeah right before the ad break okay uh what was okay we we're talking about okay we we're talking about the dead kids dead we we're talking kids. about um tim heidecker Okay, okay, I remember. I think there I remember now. Okay, I think I vaguely remember. I want to tie. I want to tie all of this up. There's a lot of shit that happened. Yeah, you know, most of almost it's personal, I guess. But like, what is it? Fucking um, uh, to tie up me turning twenty three, George Carlin, Tim Heidecker, yeah, uh, a bunch of kids, ki- literal kids dying, yeah, and even Phoebe Bridgers. I, I guess the the thing that's bringing me hope. Uh, is uh, and the thing that's annoying. Okay, there's things that are giving me hope. Things that are giving me like annoyances. I guess. Yeah. I guess this is more of like a cultural critique of comedians and artists and how we talk about tragedy. I guess. Yeah. So like, okay, so we went to the Phoebe Bridgers concert for my 23rd, and I guess like, because uh, I guess I feel like I'm getting older now. My priorities are changing slowly, and like how the fuck we talk about these sh- sh- this shit. Yeah. Because like I remember being like you know 17. Uh, when like or like 16 17 when like Trump got elected and then I was just like depressed and I didn't even like do anything about it like I was just like some fucking because I couldn't do anything about it. I was a fucking 17 year old I couldn't vote yeah but um what is it now that I have this like uh, this power and this platform to talk about it uh, and I guess that's like I think something that I think all performers are kind of realizing and have been realizing for the past 10 years well i think longer than that even well yeah and i, I guess it's like um I, I guess it's like the carlin angle yeah there, probably there since a, carlin yeah yeah since carlin and like fucking because like he uh, I, I don't know if like one of the notes this is like one of the things i was like uh, uh the after effects he had a note on it and it said politics is art which it is you know art is politics whether we like it or not and people want to just like yeah willfully not believe that <laughs> I mean, and that that actually is something that Doomer pills me is uh fucking uh the fact that we are raised in this environment that I think people, especially young people, think is like only gotten bad in the past couple of years. No, it's always been bad. Yeah, it's always been this way. And you think that it's only gotten worse in the past couple of years because it's worse than what you grew up in. Yeah. And uh, 
what you grew up in was worse than what your parents grew up in and it's yeah just been, it keeps getting fucking no it's been getting worse and it's always been getting worse like but it also encompasses every single part of our personality and the way that we think like you yeah. know before like okay what was the first shooting that affected you probably sandy hook i think i think that's the one i remember first because i do remember being because there, there were more before then oh yeah i know i mean i know there's like you, you know. probably heard about even as a kid and then you were like oops i don't know i don't care yeah that's the thing it's like i there's probably a bunch of shit i mean like i don't think i was alive for uh i don't remember when columbine happened right I was technically alive for 9-11, but I don't remember 9-11. No, yeah, you were alive for Columbine. Columbine was like 2002. I thought it was early 90s. Oh, I don't know. Maybe not. Yeah, but I thought like, it was... I know there was... um, What on. is it? I think I remember... Some of the things I remember happening... I remember the Boston bombing vaguely. The marathon bombing of that. Um, I remember fucking Reddit just blaming some random guy. <laughs> yeah oh my yeah. god the boston bomber that was so funny yeah that was awful but okay so i guess like so Fuck. we I, did it reddit that was the beginning of the we did it reddit was the boston yeah bomber. it was that and that's like you know it's like a fucking epic meme right but like i guess like <sighs> okay so like with carlin right it's like a fucking it's like yeah. the first like real counterculture comedian and also like one that really made politics a big part of the act you know yeah and i think um and I think like I think like one of the good things now, uh, ironically, is like having. Uh, I fucking hate YouTube. Fucking hate Google. Yeah. But like the fact that like we can even in the past few years, there's finally been like an uptick of like progressive programming. Yeah. At least that's like the thing that gives me hope. But then the drawback is that like oh, conservatives has also found this out. Like the fact that like Nazis were like one of the first people to really take over computers and like embrace it so you missed columbine by like a month really yeah it was 99 yeah april 20th 420 1999 holy shit really yeah why did i think it was earlier like i remember it being around 2000 era because Fuck, right after that for columbine yeah jesus yes. christ i was um yeah i would have been two Or one and a half, maybe. Something like that. Yeah, Jesus. Fuck, dude. I did not realize that. Jesus. There's a lot of shit I got to learn. Well, but like, I mean... Yeah, it's like... Uh, I mean, pretty this much has been going on, yeah, you know. Since Columbine, it's been happening every couple of months. Like, I remember my brothers having lockdowns at school. Mm. Yeah, I remember having the, like, uh, what is it, being... um what is it i remember we had like one real lockdown i think once in middle school and once in high school i can't remember the middle school one that well but i really remember the fucking high school one um we've trained for them because that's a thing we train for now yeah i remember training for them pretty much like at least once a year probably more than that oh yeah i think it was once a semester where i was it was like you get down under your desk or something yeah it or was, you um, hide uh under the well yeah, Shit. you have to hide away from the windows. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you do. You hide from the windows. The the under the desk one I think is um tornadoes, weirdly. Yeah, I remember doing tornado warnings. And then they also made us do like tornado warnings where we would all go out into the um, Oh, the hallway. hallway. Yeah. And, and then, then you, you do the do yeah the, that thing. I remember that too. Yeah. That was I did that in middle school. Because if you're in a shitty building, yeah. With a lot of windows on the fucking thing. Well, that's not even shitty. It's just like you have a lot of windows. You want yeah. to get away from them, yeah. Because you're in a school. Yeah. You want so, kids to <laughs> You have know, light, probably. Yeah. yeah. So like, yeah, you don't want your you don't want your school to have a moat, you know. Yeah. But I guess like I, I guess my okay. So like the um the hopeful thing is that like I don't know. It's just because I'm I'm putting myself more into these types of art that like is a little bit more political. Like we went to the Phoebe Bridgers thing and like we chanted "fuck DeSantis." Yeah. And they put up a fucking pride flag on the keyboard, you mm -hmm. know. And I'm like, fuck yeah, thank goodness. Especially in this red awesome. fucking state, you it, know? It was awesome just uh I was almost like emotional because it was like this is such a space for um and we've also been going to a lot of concerts lately and like uh, events. And um this was the most accepted and uh respected I felt. Yeah, honestly. It was for so fucking nice. sure. Like I like Jack White and Creator Clash, but like, you know, 
Jack White fans were rude as like, shit. Rude as and fuck. I don't even think Jack White liked him. Like I think oh, yeah, like no. Jack White fucking hated him for <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> like I was I've been thinking about that recently, uh at the end of uh the concert when he played uh Carolina Drama instead of Seven Nation Army and he made us all do the na 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 yeah that shit at the end of uh Carolina Drama. He yeah. made us do it for like way too long. And I remember him like looking at us like sing it. Sing it, motherfucker. Fucking sing it. And I feel like that was the reverse of them telling him to play Seven Nation Army. Yeah. So like he went out and was like, no, you know what? You're gonna sing. You're gonna fucking sing. Fuck you. <laughs> You're gonna fucking sing. <sighs> fucking awesome. It was it this is pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. So yeah. yeah, no, yeah. Like this was yeah, I definitely felt like more warm and like happy. Yeah. It seemed like a cooler crowd. Well, I was just like, I was like fucking bu- uh, bugging, man. Like, I kept seeing, like, women that were obviously couples, like, hanging out and, like, having a space where they could just be, like, a couple. Yeah. And I was like, that's so fucking, it's like, you don't see that, man. You don't see that in just Orlando. Yeah. Even yeah, Orlando. Even Orlando. That's supposed to be this, like, fucking, like. Pro-gay. Yeah. And, like, I guess that's, like, the weird, and, like, it kind of sucks, though, that, like, even going into this event, I'm afraid of getting fucking shot at sometimes. Yeah. And, like, I remember, like, after Creator Clash, fucking, um, uh, our mutual friend Jordan, yeah. uh, like, texted me being like, hey. Jordan Peterson. Yeah, Jordan Peterson. Yeah, yeah, yeah I love, Jordan. I love his, uh, philosophy. I'm sorry, philosophy. Jordan, if you listen to No, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay, to make it up to you, Jordan, uh, we also have a mutual friend, Aaron, that I'm going to now call him A.A. Ron, and I'm willing to bet, uh, Oh, shit, he's he gonna fucking kill you. Yeah, well, whatever. Yeah. So, fuck friends uh no but <laughs> burning bridges no but yeah no jordan was like hey like i like i just want to make sure you're okay i feel like a event with a bunch of youtubers oh. is probably a hot spot for like you know i was thinking that too because there was that event with um christina whatever there was an event yeah where someone there was there was a, a youtuber like singer lady and she got she somebody... was murdered at her fucking like meet and greet yeah. yeah I remember that I think that happened here in or uh, in Orlando I, I think it was yeah around so I, I mean I don't know I might be wrong on that that's but, a like, valid that Creator Clash if we were at a shooting Creator Clash would have happened it probably would have been, been there, Creator yeah. Clash but I mean even like a Phoebe Bridges concert I feel like with how political Phoebe can be and now coming out more like anti uh, or pro abortion yeah you know i yeah, feel uh, like i mean yeah maybe that's that's where i'm, I'm kind of like you know jack white no one's gonna shoot a jack white concert <laughs> too many yeah. cis too many cis white guys are yeah that's that's rocking cool. out to seven nation army when they <laughs> run into school yeah like <laughs> yeah let's... that's what's playing because it's in fucking the black ops 2 or whatever oh yeah for fucking fucking gamers but <laughs> i don't i don't god I don't know. I think it's just I, I'm going to be fascinated, I guess, by how I think it's becoming less of an option yeah. for people to be like apolitical. Which I think is a good and bad thing. I think it's bad because there's going to be a lot of fucking dipshits that we all like that are going to side with Dave Chappelle, you know, and then you have yeah, that's really fucked up. That's the thing where you're going to a lot of people's like image are going to be ruined. Because they're like, well, Dave Chappelle's just like a, you know, too challenging for you, you know, the yeah, fucking literally. James A. Caster bit. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know. It's it, but then it's good because then you like you you get to know which people are actually like conscious. Yeah, true. But it just sucks. It's it's fucking awful that it's day twenty seventh of day twenty sixth of May, and there's almost gonna be fifty fucking shootings probably by the end of this week before this podcast even goes out yeah because like fucking yeah like I, I every fucking week there was another one and i think it's just it's tiring yeah and it's, yeah uh, i mean yeah but i'd like you know i remember like especially in atlanta there's a lot of crime um well, i mean there's crime everywhere honestly not just in atlanta but i remember crime being very much a part of the news um, mm. whether that's fucking racism or not, which well, probably is. And I mean, because the thing is, crime has been going down since, like, the 90s. Yeah. It's been on a consist, almost consistent, like, Well, I think slope. I grew up in a time in Atlanta where it was very, like, this kid is being, was murdered, and this guy was blah, blah, blah. There's gang violence over here, and you should all think about mm. it. And it was very, like, okay, uh, you know. And I remember 
I, I wonder if my, you know, my parents were victims of this where, you know, you, <sighs> the news were like, Ooh, there's a guy and he's around your neighborhood and you should be really fucking freaked out about it. And then they would get really freaked out. Like, I, I mean, I remember there was some guy that like escaped the cops and he was like running through people's backyards. Oh yeah. It was like a like, helicopter was like searching for him or mm. whatever. And I mean, I don't think that was necessary. I think the guy was white. Uh, so I don't even think it was racism at that point, but it was like, I mean, if there's still like a fucking helicopter. Yeah. But uh, you would yeah. basically see like this kid got shot. Yeah. Uh, this kid died. And, and whether or not it was from the police or just from he just got shot in Atlanta. Um, I remember seeing that all the time as a kid, like on the news. And uh, I remember even talking in elementary school with uh, other kids who were like, is it weird that I don't feel anything when the news says there's some kid that died? Like, you know, they were questioning their own empathy as a kid, as an elementary school kid, yeah. because they were hearing that other kids were dying because it was on the news and it wasn't like in front of them. They were experiencing mm. that already as kids. And I remember being like, yeah, I get that. And then I think when I moved down here and Sandy Hook happened, I think that was also the same one for me. I think it was either Sandy Hook or Trayvon Martin. Oh, yeah. Fucking Trayvon Martin. And for, again, because like, I think that was down the street. Yeah. Yeah. That was in this fucking town. It was fucking or in the, at least it was in state. Sanford. That's close enough to being Orlando. Yeah, honestly. It was, like, it's, it's close if enough. It's, if it's within a two hour radius. Yeah, it's fucking. And he was a kid. And he was a fucking he was a kid. high school yeah. kid. And he was going and doing like what Florida teens do, which is they go get fucking um, Arizona to, iced teas and Skittles. And they from, go to 7-Eleven. Yeah. Like, and uh, just because of that, he got shot. And I think I remember that and being like really fucked yeah, up that's about fucked it. Up. Yeah, because it was fucked up. I remember, yeah. yeah, having those exact feelings and then having to hear Zimmerman fucking yeah. walk free because he used a fucking dumb stand your ground law defense. And then he started making art and selling yeah, it. and selling the gun that he used to shoot. And the art shoot. was bad. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he sold, was well, yeah, he auctioned off the gun that he used yeah. to kill yeah uh trayvon martin and it was fucking and some fucking racist just salivating over the idea that this yeah, machine like killed a black uh, kid yeah yeah like fucking hell like absolutely and so like i guess when people are shocked now i'm like why i have been a lot as much as i have been alive kids have been dying by yeah. guns as by long as guns, I, yeah. I have been alive this has been happening and it's so fucking there's, funny there's like, no reason it's I'm it's turning 25 you're turning 25 i turned 23 <laughs> that's a quarter of a hundred years every year fucking kids keep dying and it's I it's really hearing about I, it i can't it's fucking away the thing that's hilarious to me is that like it's so fucking concrete that mm -hmm. if you put gun control measures mm -hmm. if you just do common sense shit get rid of yeah. so, a certain guns that you don't need like not even like like Okay, let's just let's let's take away from the, this argument like handguns and like rifles. All right, let's just talk about assault rifles. It just or just assault rifles. Not even just assault rifle rifles. Just AK forty sevens. AK forty seven. Just that. Let's just. Uh, it's been the same the gun. AR, it's AR fifteen. Yeah, the AR fifteen specifically has been used in pretty much every fucking yeah. thing. And then if you, go, oh my god. Okay, yeah. Just get just. Just take that gun, take away that take one. Those out. The thing that sucks about that, though, is that they would, they would just find another one. But, like, well, it yeah. still shouldn't... Uh, that's why I'm saying, just let's just group assault rifles together. I mean, shit, man, if the only gun that you could buy was a pistol, probably not as many kids would die, because it's but not a kids fucking machine. Still die. Yeah, kids would of still fucking die. Of course kids are gonna die, yeah. yeah. And that's why I, we're gonna, I wanna bring those back in later. But, like, yeah, fucking... Yeah. I remember, uh... What is it? Fucking... It really is. We just need more fucking gun control, man. Yeah. <laughs> like it really. And then I, I saw there was like a Vox article or some shit about like, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna. Okay, here's how many guns the country has here. Yeah. Uh, and here's how many gun deaths happen. Yeah. And it's so obviously a straight fucking line of like the amount of guns to your like, yeah. uh, uh, gun deaths are surprisingly related oh yeah that was the one that was the um scatter plot one yeah the scatter plot one and there was like, like all other countries are in the <laughs> lower left every corner other developed country and the then the u.s is up here yeah like literally oh it's over yeah, there yeah like yeah <laughs> yeah like and so like <laughs> just so 
fucking like it's dumb it's fucking stupid and it well i mean it's obviously about money it's just about money i don't know how people are ever shocked i don't know how people are ever turning around and being like i can't believe it's all about money a fucking course it's it is. always been about money it's always been about money what do you think it's a thing we made up and it has power yeah it's gonna fucking if you haven't even fucking thought about it it's just like yeah no yes people are gonna figure out ways to fucking murder people and you know people are saying mental illness the weird thing i'm seeing is people are like mental illness is not an excuse for murder and i'm like yeah but we should probably be <laughs> like having better mental health yeah we should I, it's shit the- uh, if anything like to stop <sighs> incels from happening I feel like you have to be a little bit mentally ill to become an incel. Yeah. You gotta no. have some sort of well, I mean, it's, social development problem. Well, that's the thing is that like, uh, <laughs> I don't remember what it is, but there's like the, one of the measures of gun control would be red flag laws, which yeah. is, uh, I think 60% of domestic violence perpetrators will eventually like use a gun to fucking kill someone. Yeah. it's and, not- and I think, um, it's like, there's another stat. I can't think of right off the top of my head. There's a lot of, di- there's, the, the thing that's also like sucks about this is how fucking complex the issue is yeah. just because it's not a complex quote unquote the solution's obvious but the reason why it feels complex because there's 15 different moving parts yeah all of them some of them working with or against the other parts but they still bring into the same conclusion well it's like you know somebody from the UK coming into this country and uh, seeing a, a pharmacy ad for a pill yeah that like will help you lose weight or something you know or like a, a a pill for diabetes that's like gonna rival metformin or something and they're just like what why do you have that it's yeah. because it's a it is a politicized issue now it is yeah yeah it's bad that it is it's it's fucking we can't choose to not do it anymore because it is a politicized issue the only way to deal with it is through politics yeah. so it's politicized that's the only way there's nothing else that we can do because if you're saying okay don't politicize this issue there are kids that are dead i'm like well you're just saying you want more kids to die because there's nothing else that we can do about it yeah what you want me to go (laughs) in the room with two guns just to stand next to the teacher and be like on the lookout for 18 year olds with ar-15 yeah and the fucking mental health damage that'll cause kids to yeah. be in a constant police state. Exactly. Yeah. That's, uh, that's what they want, though. Yeah, they want a police state and then fucking... <laughs> and I guess that's also my point with um, growing up with shootings happening all the time and thinking, why am I desensitized to shootings? You know, that's what they want. They want that to be a thing. They want that to happen. They want you to be like, I don't know. I don't know what to do anymore. And it's hard not to because it's a political force. Yeah, and that's like a. I remember, um, you know, uh, there's a. It's not just an effect; it's a cause. It's yeah. There's a cause. Yeah, causes the lead to effects. Yeah, and like fucking. Uh, I just remember. I mean, part of that desensitization. I remember. Um, ironically, fucking South Park of all things. Yeah. <laughs> Back when I was still watching South Park, I think there was a whole. I don't remember if it was just an episode, but it feels like it was a season because there was a point where they were doing like a very serialized like uh, start to finish thing. Yeah. But like they there were just times in South Park where like the kids would be in the classroom and then the joke was there was a school shooting going on and the kids would just fucking just keep doing their schoolwork. Yeah. Because like this was, I think, probably 2017, I think. Yeah. Like, yeah, at that point, I was fucking desensitized, too. Yeah, me too. And, like, it fucking sucks, man. It's just, like... You know, and and that was something that, I guess... (sighs) It's a mistake, though, to politicize these things and expect everybody to just get desensitized to it. Because people aren't robots, you know? No, yeah, of course not. There is a limit. And I think that's what this government is really playing with, is uh, it's sad that human rights right now socially are becoming a that we have to go through a cultural revolution to get human rights it's sad that that has to happen that shouldn't have to happen we should just progress as a species but because of the gun industry because of the oil industry because of all of these different 
you know, systems from capitalism. We have to fucking create, we have to be a minority against the majority of people making money. Mm. When it's, we're not, we are the majority. Yeah. There's like 12 people making money. Yeah, literally. We have to beat them up. We got to beat them the fuck but up. But it's yeah. sad that we have to beat them up because fucking we, we shouldn't have to. We shouldn't fucking have <laughs> we to. We shouldn't fucking have to. We all deserve rights. It should yeah. be like obvious. Every fucking person was born into this world by a woman. Or a person that has a uterus. Which still, go, if you have a uterus, you go through the problems of a person that has a uterus. Yeah. Fuck, man. So they grow up, those fucking 12 people that make money, they grow up and they have, they're like, oh shit, fucking, I think women shouldn't be able to get abortions. Fuck my mom. Fuck my sister. Fuck my daughter. I don't give a shit. Uh, they probably know gay people, but they don't give a fuck. They don't give a shit. They know trans people for sure. It's not that they're ignorant or any or that they're old. They don't care. They don't care. They just want they money. They want money. That's it. <sighs> they probably have known people who have died by shootings. Don't give a shit. They don't give a fuck. Facebook still allows As long as it's not happening to me. Yeah, I mean Facebook still allows fucking political advertising to have lies in it. Yes. It's that's just that, that's what the situation is. Yeah. There's no other excuse for it. It's just Greed, lying, fucking... Selfishness. Selfishness, yeah. A lack of, a complete lack of empathy for anybody that you don't care about. Hmm. Fucking sucks. It has always been that way. It's That's, always going to be that way. Unless someone... Unless everyone can fucking unite, finally. Burn it all down. Burn it all down. <laughs> I think we should burn it all down. Kill your friends. Kill your friends. Kill your friends. No, don't. <laughs> Sarah, I swear to Christ. <laughs> Conservatism uh, needs to fucking needs to leave, though. Well, fascism needs fascism to leave. Fascism needs to leave. And conservatism. Both of them. Conservatism leads to fucking fascism. Like, it's just... Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, now it yeah. does. In this, in this sense. And I think it... I mean, I really do think it kind of always has been. Yeah. I think there is like a level of like I think it did genuinely start out as like I don't know I don't think the government should have all this overreach and I think that's fine you know I think that's a fine that's thing a to fine debate thing, but I don't I why think... does it lead to nobody should have rights like, yeah that's the thing yeah <laughs> that doesn't make any fucking sense there's never been a free market in this country no and uh anyway so how was your birthday was it good <laughs> It was good. Yeah. That's it. That's all I have to say. That's all I want to say about it. I already talked about as I grow older, I want to fucking be a little bit more concise in my language and also make sure that I fight conservatives. How many minutes has it been since you asked me a question and then immediately went to your DMs? Wow. I'm watching. Yeah, I'm watching. <laughs> Where's the, there's the, how many minutes? 10 minutes? 20 minutes? She just said thank you. Oh, okay, that's nice. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Fuck. It was fine. It was, fine. It was yeah. a good concert at Phoebe Bridgers. Yeah, it was good. I guess Phoebe Bridgers is talking about how she feels like it, it's fucking annoying that she has the same response to... Everything? Yeah. Yeah. Which I agree with, and I totally get that. Yeah, I mean, I guess, and I guess that's what I mean by I get doomer-pilled, you know? I get that, yeah. That's very doomer-pilled. My, I, I'm happy to see that, like, uh, this is finally i've hit my breaking point months ago yeah but i think some people's breaking points have finally it's gonna reached. Con yeah it's gonna continuously be a series of breaking points you know yeah and i guess that's also like weirdly enough going back into like i really do feel like we are just ants you know marching yeah yeah no like <laughs> i feel like you ever think like uh we're just like a fucking alien species to like somebody else, you know? Yeah, I get that. I take that thought and I go, well, then what if this is just how we've evolved? You mm -hmm. know, mentally, what if we've just evolved into this? Like we get all idealistic in our youth. And then when we get older, we stop fucking caring about people. That fucking sucks, though. Yeah. 
I think about that because I'm just like, what if that's just the thing? What if that's just how it is? What if that's just how we've built the world around ourselves and how it's impacted us? Mm. Jesus, I refuse to believe that. <laughs> God damn it. Well, I mean, I think it is true, but I think it's like once you realize it, then you're like, oh, this is fucking. That's bad. Yeah. Propaganda. Yeah. That's what that is. It's just straight up propaganda. That's all it is. It's just moves to the villages, false. buy a gro- uh, gar- uh, golf cart. Yeah. And just fucking not give a shit about anyone else. Yeah. Get your cocktail and drink it and be like, all right, another shooting Accept happened. Accept your fate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck that. I'll never accept my fate. Fuck, man. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's get into these listener stories. <laughs> <laughs> but first. So, yes. so let's move capital baby for us only for us we don't do we never do corporate advertising fuck corporates i don't know i want to hear from people that are still in that idealized state you know people that think uh they can change things because i want to know i want to know what your thoughts are you know i mean you just gotta fucking i, I mean there's a couple things you gotta people. do you gotta fucking you gotta annoy your representatives yeah you have to reach out to your representative. I'm sorry, guys. You got to do some work. Um, it's, vote harder? You Okay, guys, vote, but, like, voting harder is a fucking stupid phrase. Um, Keep guys, voting, but it doesn't end at voting. Seems like you got to vote a little harder. Guys, Keep I got to go back to brunch. Don't vote for fucking dipshits. <laughs> vote, but then you fucking pressure them. A little spicy. You know what I mean? Threaten to take away their fucking power, <laughs> and maybe they'll fucking get the idea. Show up to your uh, uh, representative's house with a gun. Don't do that. That's, you should we do can't, that. We Just can't knock put on, that in. Knock in there. Be like, hey. Protest. Uh, show, okay, protest, but like show up to like your representative's offices if you can. Go like, And make sure. Stalk him to the nearest... Uh, don't I can't Planet put that fitness. in. I can't put that in, Sarah. You know I can't put that in. And stand you outside. You literally know I can't put this in. Hold it's just the gun. a sensor bar. You're it's not, just You're not shooting the guy. You're not Cut pointing it at the guy. Cut the feet. <laughs> hey, thank you for getting this far into the episode. I thank know it's you. been I know it's been a bit of a bit of a bit of a uh, sad one. But not events. great. Uh, we do appreciate you listening this far and listening to this. Um, yeah. Uh, fucking, please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and yeah. ring the bell. We have a Patreon, APWSCR. Buy me coffee, APWSCR, if you want to support us financially. Damn, Josh, you're so sad. Where's the energy? <laughs> I'm saving it for these fucking coffees we got. I do want. Oh yeah, I, true. We got. Coffees. I want to say thank you to everyone who's given us a coffee. We actually missed a few last week because we recorded before. Yeah, people sent us coffees, but they sent it on the day we recorded. Oh yeah, yeah, sent yeah it like that an is hour. true. Yeah, that was wild. That was funny. That was a weird. So sorry, we have three coffees with us today. Yeah, uh, if you go to Patreon, you'd be able to get uh, exclusive content and early release. Yeah, uh, I'm saving. I'm saving the energy for these coffees, which we do appreciate. We do. Uh, hopefully, it'll show me what people have said. It'd be really funny if it's just like if you go fuck yourself. <laughs> you don't re- get to read this. So <laughs> right. So this first coffee came to us from CB. Hi, Sarah and Josh. I just wanted to say thank you for your podcast. I recently got divorced and lost all, almost all of my friends. It's been lonely. Maybe it's sad, but listening to your podcast makes me feel like I'm hanging out with friends and helps Aww. me feel less lonely. Where are your friends now? Where are your friends? Yeah. Parasocial relationship. Yep. <laughs> but I, I get it. Don't don't apologize. Don't feel sorry. I fucking There's so many, so many times I've listened to podcasts when I was feeling lonely. Yeah, I've been doing that with the Always Sunny podcast recently. I get that. I feel fucking, like they're my buds. Yeah, I do that with Super Mega. Yeah. Uh, What is it? Uh, also, can you tell my ex-husband Colin to go fuck himself? Don't worry. He deserves it. Thanks, guys. Fuck you, Colin. Fuck you, Colin. Fuck off. <laughs> fuck you. And fuck thank off. you for the coffees and Got giving a shit me a reason name. to say... Yeah, honestly, kind of. Yeah. I think saying fuck Colin is going to bring my energy back, so thank you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah. So that's our first coffee. Yeah. This comes to us from uh, Kaylee Ray. She, her, pronounced uh, Kaylee Ray. Uh, I've been listening to you guys for a, about a year now after finding you on a random TikTok. I used to live in Florida and now reside in, uh, I think, Washington. Nice. I'm currently on medical leave after a full hysterectomy and y'all are helping me through it. Thanks for the laughs and the Aww. validation. Well, we're glad to help you out through all the recovery. Yeah. yeah. And congrats on the hysterectomy. Yeah, congrats. 
Oh, yeah. And our last coffee from AJ She Her. Mm-hmm. I look forward to your podcast every week. Thank you so much for the f- fun, inclusive content. I'm sorry I'm not in a position to so- support you guys on a regular regular basis. Yeah, don't apologize. Don't be sorry. Do not apologize. We, we love just it appreciate. All. Yeah, we love all support. And even, again, even if you don't send us money, we love it that you're just watching. Yeah, honestly, every watch yeah. is like a. It's just nice, you know. It's nice to know. But yeah, do not do not apologize at all. All yeah. support, financial and unfinancial. Unfinancial, not financial is is good. Unfinan- misfinancial? Misfinancial. Deregulated. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, no, fucking, we yeah. appreciate it, so thank you. Yeah. Uh, I know this week has been fucking rough, and we hope everyone's doing okay. Stay yeah, for safe. sure. Don't give up on fighting, and we'll see you guys on the podcast uh, now. What? All right, you ready for the listener stories? I am so fucking ready for the Are li- you guys ready for the listener stories? Are you guys stories? ready for the listener stories? Then let's get into listener stories. Oh my gosh. Also an update on the person uh, who DM'd me for money. Yeah. Uh, she just said thank you, basically. She ah, was like, nice. oh my gosh, thank you. I'm getting emotional and all that stuff. I think I think that was a real person. Oh. That's nice. We helped someone li- live on the podcast, baby. Solved it. And I'm sorry for uh, fucking talking shit about you for like an hour and a half. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm sorry. I've, I been, I've been scammed too many times in the past month. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. It's not your fault, but I'm very biased. Yeah. But yeah, welcome to the listener story segment. Yeah, welcome. And Sarah, you can go first. Sure. This is from D. He, him. Ooh. How do I get my mom to leave my girlfriend alone? I sent the story in. <laughs> This is going to sound like the stupidest problem in the world, but it's honestly starting to get frustrating. Some background about my mom. Her and my dad are divorced, and my dad now lives in a different state. She lives alone, and I am her only child. But anyways, to the story. My girlfriend is literally perfect. This is very cute. Hmm. Beautiful, smart, and a genuine, kind, and compassionate person. Okay, I introduced her to my family. I accidentally pressed the wrong thing. I'm sorry. I introduced her to my family last year, and they loved her. Specifically, she has become really close to my mom. I know that sounds good, but here's the problem. It's gotten to the point where I feel like she's crossing boundaries. Oh? Uh, the mom, I believe, uh, is yeah, what yeah. he means. Uh, it started off simple, her constantly making comments like, I'm thinking of doing this uh, to the yard. Do you think blank will like it? Or don't eat all of that. I want you to take some for blank. I thought it was cute at first, but then it progressed. For example, once I was on the phone with my mom and told her my girl was coming to my house in passing, guess who then showed up? You guessed it, my mom. (laughs) She spent the whole day talking to her and ignoring my blunt hints about how I wanted alone time. But think about, but I think what pushed me over the edge is about two nights ago I was talking to my girl and suggested we do something next weekend, and she told me we couldn't because we had uh, my mom's dinner party. My mom had told me nothing about a dinner party. What? And my girl was just as surprised as I was that I hadn't been mentioned that it hadn't been mentioned. Yeah, to you're me. literally the son. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> I called my mom up the next day and asked why she told my girlfriend and not me. And she casually said, and I quote, "I just thought blank would pass on the message." That's dumb. That's already dumb. Yeah, just tell everyone. <laughs> I just said, okay, and had a short, casual conversation before hanging up the phone. I don't know how to address this. I love that my mom sees my girlfriend as part of the family, but I don't like how she's handling it. I also don't want to say anything to her that could damage her and my girlfriend's relationship. So how do I respectfully tell my mom that she needs to take a few steps back? Well, I think there's two problems here. Um, First of all... <laughs> I, I just want that to state it- for the record, I'm very well equipped to answer this question. Uh, um, uh, okay, well, okay, because I think I, I, you and me, listener, we have very similar problems, but on an Kinda. opposite, yeah, on the opposite end, because my mom will include me in on everything, but we have a family group chat that doesn't, there's like 10 different group chats, and there's I different people. I never get people. any information Yeah, from and the then family. sometimes one of my sister's partners will get included, but not the other one, or both of them will, but not Sarah, and then it's a very weird, like... I used to think it was specifically me, but I think that's my abandonment issues. I think it's, uh, it's it happens to everybody in the family, so I think she just doesn't know technology. And that's probably what it is at the, yeah. And so. now she's just like, I'm just gonna have my kids in this group chat... And I'm going to tell them and they're going to tell their partners. Yeah. And that's what she thinks. 
it does feel it does sting sometimes because i don't ever know what's going on and then it'll be like oh yeah we got this thing coming up next week yeah so i understand the frustration because i mean it just sucks to know like you make all these plans thinking about your weekend or whatever i sort of fly around here what the fuck yeah just flying around i don't (laughs) doing what flies do yeah um but yeah fucking uh you know, you have a fucking, you think, well, what you're going to do for your weekend, and then, like, your partner tells you, oh, yeah, we got to go to this thing because of the our, somebody's birthday. And then you're like, fuck, okay. What well, the fuck, yeah. I wasn't well, as told. I left out of the loop, yeah. yeah. I think that's a natural thing. I think it's a little weird because you're her son. Yeah, that's the weird part. I feel like it's it's weird that, like... You're definitely right that it's a boundary crossing. Oh, yeah, for sure it's a boundary crossing. And then, like, you know, fucking... You're you're literally not your partner's being treated more like a, a sibling than you are, you know, or like a which can be weird. It can be a little bit weird. Yeah, I think that is very weird. And like I don't know, showing up, <laughs> just showing up unannounced, like getting in the fucking car and speeding on the highway to make sure going over to your house so you can talk to your son's girlfriend is weird. That's weird. fucking weird. Yeah, it's a little... It's not great. So I think it's partly like, you gotta tell her like, hey, listen, don't do that anymore. Don't just show Please up don't do that. Let us know. Keep me in the loop of things. Don't tell... Yeah. I, even if you tell my girlfriend or my partner, tell just me fucking... Too. Yeah, tell me. I don't like not knowing. I want to know... Yeah. ...what's going on. Yeah. I think I, once you set up those boundaries, because it, it sucks, because you do have to set up like very specific... Boundaries have to be specific for people usually and the more specific the better because then you know if she goes against the boundary and it's specific enough then you know that she doesn't give a shit you know yeah true but most of the time it's like if you say hey mom can you turn it down a notch to my girlfriend what does that mean to her what does that mean to you yeah you gotta like talk you gotta about be it. real specific because if you just say turn out a notch it means at uh, nine times out of ten yeah she'll drive over unannounced as opposed to ten times out of ten yeah she'll be like oh, okay know? i'll just do that every other week yeah yeah it's like, <laughs> it's like you know but it doesn't really no. solve the issue yeah yeah i think just saying like hey listen please only come over like when we've talked about it and we've set up a time and a date yeah uh, like, yeah i can't really you know blah 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 and then if she pushes back on you then you have a problem there you know but uh, that, and then also like, hey, in the future, please, you know, keep me in the loop about stuff. Mm. Like, you know, dinner shit. Yeah. Fucking. Yeah. Like, you know, I just don't like no, not knowing things. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, no, I agree with that. I don't think you're like, that's. Uh, I don't think you're the asshole. I think your mom is a little strange, maybe a little needy. To yeah. Have, like, because uh, uh, you said that she lives alone. Yeah, and that's like I can definitely. I wonder if that's part of it. That's probably that's definitely part of it. Yeah. So, but then like I guess wanting to have like another like person or another like woman to connect with, I guess. Yeah, I wonder. I think sometimes with mothers, it's like they treat their sons like you don't have to talk all the time, and then when they treat their daughters like we have to be best friends. Yeah, <laughs> we have to be best friends. Got to be the best of friends. When you don't like you don't it's to, yeah. it's a gendered thing that they put on themselves. So Dude. I mean, honestly, I think if you say like, "Hey, mom, I just want to talk more with you," then she'll probably be open to that yeah, for sure. Especially if you want like just alone time, like fucking <laughs> with your girlfriend. With yeah. your girlfriend, yeah, you can probably just be like, "Hey, I just want to spend some time alone with my girlfriend," but um, can we talk together at some point? Yeah, or maybe you can set up like a you know where you meet up at a certain amount of time. Like yeah. once a month, twice a month. Yeah, I mean that's how we kind of do it with yeah. my mom. Is once a month, we go there. Yeah, uh, d- 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 something crazy happens. Honestly, every single time we go over <laughs> some fucking bad shit, but, crazy um, happens. Yeah, no, but yeah, no, fucking. I mean, still, yeah, it's just a matter. You just gotta communicate. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think there's like really Unle- that, unless your mom reacts in like a shitty way. Then I don't really. Right there, you keep me away. Well, from I don't my wanna, mom. I wanna do that. The, the, the things that. I one and not what you what i don't care about you (laughs) i birthed you into this world i'll take you out of it i'll fucking kill you i'll fucking kill you (laughs) christ so yeah i don't know fucking um i don't think you're the asshole i don't think you're i think this is probably a common problem too yeah yeah i don't know you need need your space you need your time together oh shit there you go that was good that was good but yeah no not the asshole yeah you're not the asshole all right, next story, baby. I already got loaded. I'm ready. Loaded. 
This next story comes to us from from uh, Bree. She, her. Nice. Hey, guys. Hello. <laughs> What's up, Greg Trickington? Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Uh, Greg so Trickington. Not, yeah. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Sorry. Hey, guys. I've been thinking about the situation slash question so much lately, and I would love to hear your thoughts. Okay. About four years ago, I met a girl on Twitter, and we became really close. Okay. We had a lot of things in common, and we clicked instantly. Everything was fine. And we even planned to meet in person. We were both super excited when the day finally came. We went to a drag show together, so it wasn't the best place to, quote, hang out, I guess. But we both had a good time, mm -hmm. as far as I knew. Her mom even offered to take me to my hotel room after, after my planned ride bailed on me. Oh. Anyways, I had a really good time with her, and I thought everything was good. A few weeks pass, and she slowly starts talking to me less and less. Until eventually, she just stops texting me altogether, but she's clearly active on Twitter and she's talking to our other mutual friend group. I tried not to overthink it at first, but I was confused and hurt uh, a little hurt. I remember asking her at some point if I did something wrong, and she kind of just brushed me off. So I decided to just cut her off because my feelings were hurt. Yeah. But now, four years later, I miss her. She was really nice and supportive of me, and we really had, had really good conversations. I'm not sure if I'm actually missing her or if I'm just being nostalgic and have rose-colored lenses. Uh, should I try to reach out or just let the past be? I'd love to hear what you guys think. Thank, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I would try to reach out. I mean, it yeah. doesn't sound like she did anything wrong. Yeah. Do we? I don't know if we need more information. I, like, it's probably just like, I don't know. I have probably, no idea why. Y'all probably just grew apart. I mean, I don't know. Twitter friends. I'm sus with Twitter friends. I have people that on Twitter that you know, like we'll comment on each other's stuff and we'll like each other. And I think that's great. And I, but I'm also like, I don't know. How do I become friends with you? How do I get to that point? Where you it's know? not just like Twitter friends. Yeah. I get that. Where you're actual friends. I, I'm, I'm not very good at like texting people or telling people that. Yeah. I'm pretty bad at texting. <laughs> and like, the, and yeah. like I, I, I talked about him before, but Jordan, and I do text uh, through Twitter. I'm horrible at Twitter. And yeah. Horrible in texting and period, so I apologize to everybody. Yeah, I apologize to everyone, too. It's not your guys' fault. It's my fault. It's, yeah. Um, I'm very, I'm very fucking socially awkward <laughs> and uh, isolationist. <laughs> Same. So, I mean, we're probably not the best people to talk to about I don't know. This. It's probably worth reaching out. Um, um, yeah, because, like, who knows? Maybe, like, I don't know. But, like, if you don't get a response within, like, a week... Fuck them. Fuck them. Yeah, I just love the past. Yeah, they just didn't. I do get the idea of like, because uh, like time will usually, and this heal is like a wounds. heal wounds, yeah, and feel like, you know, rose colored glasses, but like, uh, I mean, I don't know. Fucking, it didn't seem like anything really bad happened. Yeah, you don't seem to remember anything that bad. Yeah, if it was just like you guys met out met in person once and that slowly died up, I mean, that might just be a natural thing that happens, maybe. Uh, I don't know, they got busy. I, there's a lot of different things that could happen, but it might be worth reaching out. Yeah. Or it could um, just be like, you know, they just didn't want to be your friend, which yeah, sucks. Which sucks. And but then it's like, you don't want to be friends with somebody who doesn't want to be your friend. Yeah. So then you just have to um, find a new person to be yeah. friends with, you know? But definitely reach out, be nice, and just be like, hey, what's up? And if you don't get a good response, fuck them. You deserve better then. Yeah. Uh, that's really as close as, as, as that's it. far as my advice goes. I'm, I don't have any. I only have like three friends. One of which I text sometimes, and I'm just bad at it. That's such a mood, man. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I just reach out. Fucking monster. Are you drinking monster. Yeah. Wasn't your foot on that last night? <laughs> yeah, it was. It was the a, fuck, it's my bro. Foot monster. Foot monster. We had to walk a mile from the concert. <laughs> we did, yeah, because the um the, the shuttle, shuttle was like forty minutes. <laughs> yeah, at least it was uh, a big ass line, so we walked like a mile. And yeah. uh, it fucked up my foot so bad it gave me a fucking, um, what are those things called? Blister. Yeah, a yeah. blister. So we went to a 7-Eleven and got a monster and I put it put it on my foot. And now I drank that monster. What are you going to do about it? Huh? You going to fight me? Get triggered, lib. <laughs> Get triggered, lib. All right, but yeah, that's my that's that's my story. Solved it. Solved it. We haven't said so we got solved. Fuck! Solved, solved it twice! It. We ah, solved two fuck. different things. Fuck! Ah. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. This is from Anonymous She, Her. Ooh. What should I do? That's it. That's the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know, okay. one of these days, someone's just going to submit that, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it in the podcast, and you can decide whether or not it was a good bit or not. <laughs> but yeah, okay. Okay, it's <laughs> Anonymous She, Her. What should I do? 
for context, I, 22 female, started getting involved with, <sighs> let's call him Joe, 34 male. Are you fucking kidding? Is this a bit? Wait, we're no, for- it's not. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Every fucking this week. One, I don't know why I'm doing this one. Every fucking okay. week. I know what most people are thinking already, but the age thing doesn't bother me in the slightest. Oh, well, then everything's fine. <laughs> everything's really gr- great. You guys, I, I need to know when you guys met. I need to fucking know. I don't think she even says. Uh, yeah. Uh, fucking Joe used to be my coworker who eventually got promoted to be my boss. For a short period of time. This is bad on two different levels now. <sighs> At the place that I work, we're all pretty close and hang out as a group outside of work. Joe and, Joe and I had been friends for three years before ever seeing each other in a romantic sense. Dated other people. When we met, I was in a long-term relationship which ended before the holidays of 2021. The guy I had been with, let's call him Derek, 23 male, cheated on me. His friends told me about how he would literally drool over women when they were out at bars or on trips. <laughs> a wooga. A wooga. <laughs> and how they'd encourage him to do stuff not to, just to test Derek, but he'd always say, no, I love my girlfriend. Knowing all of this, it made me incredibly hard to trust him in general, especially considering his friends would encourage things. That is really yeah, that's fucked really up. shitty. Yeah, what the fuck? Don't hang out with those friends anymore. Yeah, those friends suck. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's breakup worthy to me already. Yeah. yeah. Uh, amongst other problems, that's ultimately why I ended the relationship with Derek. Not long after I ended up getting involved. After not long after I ended up getting involved with Joe, I got promoted and moved to a different location so that if we ever became public and our company ever found found out, we wouldn't get in trouble. When? Let's sort of change those ifs to when. Uh, we've been taking things very slow. We've been together for about three or four months now. It's the best relationship I've been in. He communicates well with me. He treats me so well. I really want to iterate three or four months now. <coughs> Just keep and that in your mind. about for three years, so... Well, I mean, just, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. He communicates with me. He treats me so well. He will surprise me with things if I simply mention once how excited I am about them. Our mutual friends support us and my personal friends adore him and how happy he makes me. They've gone as far as to say that in the four years I was with Derek, I was never as happy with him as I am with Joe. Now we get to the meat of it all. Recently, I was kicked out of my dad's. I was still living with him and my family at the time. I'll admit, with my depression, my room didn't look the best and was pretty messy. I've been there. I feel, yeah, same. <sighs> One day while I was at work, my father, aunt, and uncle went through my entire room and bagged it all up. This is so fucked up. Oh, Jesus, yeah. Uh, I came home and my father kept telling me that nothing was wrong and they were simply cleaning my room. I was mortified. My family, who is against using medication to treat depression or anxiety, had zero clue I had gotten prescribed a small dose to help. They found the prescription bottle. I also had things I definitely never wanted my father of all people to find. I was embarrassed. I felt so exposed. Not to mention every single item of mine was in bags. What was I supposed to think? I had gotten home around 6 p.m. and found all of this. It wasn't until 11 p.m. when my dad finally came to talk to me. All he said was that I would have to sleep in someone else's room that night or find other accommodations. I struggled feeling safe anywhere I am, past trauma, and that didn't sit well with me. I ended up calling my mother, who told me to come stay with her, and that's what ended up happening. I'm sorry, that's fucked that's up. That's terrible. That's horrible. And that's really fucked up. Joe has been there for me this entire time and helping me calm down when I start to feel anxious about everything I still can't locate. And on the other hand, this move has helped my mom and I grow closer. The only thing my, it, the only thing is my mom adored Derek. She turned a blind eye to everything wrong he ever did and would convince me to forgive him. So recently she sat me down and wanted to talk about my love life, in which I had explained Derek and I, while still friends, sorta, were not involved. Why are you still friends with... I don't know, it's weird. Uh, well, okay, well, okay, it's not the main point, but okay. She convinced me to tell her if there was anything else... Stating, I'm your mom, you can talk to me about these things. Weird, also. Weird. (laughs) So, I told her about Joe. She cannot get over the age gap. She refuses to hear anything else about him. She won't even call him by his name and instead refers to him as the (laughs) (laughs) 34-year-old. You know what? Fuck, man. You've been through so much. I don't want to yell at you, man. I'm sorry. I don't want to laugh at you. I don't want to be mean to you. I really don't. But this also, really, I the agree with 34 year old. 
I, I agree with your mom, man. I kind of agree a little bit. I, I don't like the way she's doing it, but I, Listen, I do agree man, she's with it. Your parents are not great at... Her parents are not great at communicating or communicating. being, you know, being a decent... Respectful. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, it, 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 yeah, it's a respect issue. The small things I did tell her about him, she has convinced herself must be a lie and that he's only saying those things to get into my pants. Because, quote unquote, what else would a 34-year-old want with a 22-year-old? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> yeah, um, based. Listen, I'm... <laughs> uh, listen... Listen, I'll like, try to give you a benefit of the doubt. Have you listened to the show before? We, uh, yeah, we've talked about this so many much. times. And I'm like, sorry. you gotta know what we were gonna say. Yeah, this was. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, but like, <laughs> I guess for for future reference, if you re if remember, if you got an age gap relationship and you want us to be like, oh yeah, that's the only good one, it's not gonna work. It's, <laughs> it's not, not gonna, gonna work. work out. It's not. Gonna it's work. gonna be a bad time for you. You have to be. 30 and 40 and even that I'm gonna be like that's a little even weird. Even then I'm sus because I had parents that had a 20 year age gap and that still fucked me up for yeah, life. Yeah so. Fucking my dad died when I was 19. Fucking think about that shit. Yeah. Christ yeah you're right. Okay you know, sorry. Yeah. It, it's still bad. It's not great. Yeah let's keep going. Let's keep going. Okay okay it, it's left me feeling a little disheartened but I know Joe. I know him. Uh, I've been dating him for three or four months now. I know who he is. But you've also known him for three years. But like, but you've also only been dating him for three or four yeah, months, you'll, man. Yeah, there's... <laughs> we haven't even gotten to the year mark yet. I trust him more than most people. He has never once given me a reason not to. He also has zero reason to lie about anything. He listen, has extreme reason to lie listen, about stuff. Uh, I'm going to try and save all my thoughts, but okay. Yeah, okay. I truly believe she's just upset I won't consider getting back together with Derek. Well, okay, if that's the case, that's still stupid. Like, fuck Derek, whatever. I but actually like, don't believe that. I think she was just trying to be a supportive mom with Derek. Yeah, I think, yeah, just trying to be supportive, but then, like, but also, like, I think yeah, of how shitty Derek is, fuck Derek. She probably so. should have seen the red flags. Should have seen the red flags, yeah. But, I mean, like, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, don't know. okay we'll talk sorry, about yeah, it later. Yeah. But I'm not sure how to navigate this the entire thing. I don't want this to cause my mom and I to grow apart, but I also don't like her talking badly about Joe, who she refuses to learn anything else about. So I guess I'm asking, what should I do? All right, so, I mean, there are multiple things. Like, we don't agree like you know i don't yeah, agree with don't, it but yeah. also like it's your life you're above 18 i don't care i do I think, think that it's weird a 34 year old is gonna date a 22 year old i think it's a little i mean I it's, always it's gonna weird be, it's always gonna be a little bit weird to me why can't he find somebody i think that's 34? yeah and like i really i get that you knew i knew you knew joe for it was three years. Weird that he was your boss, and you can. It's weird to that have was the boss. Real, yeah, it was like, already that was that weird is strange. enough. Um, I don't think I think everyone's shitty. Here. <laughs> I'm gonna. I mean, I don't. I don't necessarily think you're even shitty. I don't think you're shitty either. I yeah, just think you're like, a little naive. But like, who, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Fucking Jesus. Fuck, who knows? Maybe know. you guys are actually in love, and you know everything's I mean, yeah, fine. Giving the benefit a good of the guy. doubt. Yeah, but like also like. It's fine. I've just read we've you you listen to the podcast you've heard all these stories yeah I mean when the age gap is fucking twenty to seventeen this is pretty fucked and everyone like ninety percent of like, people are like yeah it's fucked up yeah, like, yeah what the fuck I was in that relationship that wasn't great yeah I don't know I think even because like your brain isn't fully developed until you're twenty five yeah and that's why I even I'm like okay with like okay maybe twenty five and thirty maybe. Like, you know, like, I think, I think if you do age gap relationships later in life, I and it's know. with someone that's like, you know, I don't even, I mean, I, I have know. my own personal, you know, resistances to that, you know, is my dad and my mom got together when my mom was 30 and he was 50. And yeah, okay, uh, I mean, I get that. Like now I don't have a dad. <laughs> I had 19 years max with my dad. <laughs> So that's really cool and awesome um fucking you know it's yeah. i have like personal things against it so you're asking the wrong people yeah that are going mean, to, yeah i think if you want to us to be like no that's totally fine you're asking the wrong people but yeah, i'm are. also not going to fucking judge you i know I we have been you, yeah. but i'm not going to you're an adult you're an adult you're gonna make adult decisions this is your life it's not my life yeah but like i you know i so, think fuck, okay well okay I'll, let's get the easy <laughs> shit out of the way fuck your dad do what your dad did with all the shit in the yeah. the trash bags? Fucking garbage. Bad. Not good. 
I think it's fucked up that your dad is against medication. I think it's also fucked up what he did with the trash bags, but I've also been so depressed and in that space where I really did let my room we get to like almost like where it will hurt the house. Like yeah. bugs fucking bullshit you know and like it's a sign of a mental problem he should have been like hey listen we're gonna clean your that's room that's the thing yeah and uh you need to go to therapy like you know we need it to help been you that. out yeah it shouldn't have been just uh <sighs> i'm not gonna talk to you let's i'm gonna put everything in trash bags i don't know why it took him five hours to tell you that you need to find somewhere else to sleep yeah that's fucking insane that yeah, that's is fucking insane to me jesus but yeah fuck that i think your mom is a little too invested in your love life i would tell a her to back bit, the yeah. fuck off a little bit yeah it's like there are people that don't tell their moms without they're dating anyone anyone at all i don't know why your mom is like who's it who's who What's are you fucking tea, sis you know who are you having sex with it, it feels like your parents are very like they don't know what to do like they are just like they're kind of just throwing shit to the wind yeah they care so much about you that they are hurting you in a way yeah no they're for sure hurting you yeah like i it's i don't know i (laughs) you asked us for advice we're going to give you the advice we're going to tell you we don't like age gap relationships but my actual advice is set a boundary with your mom and say hey listen you don't like him that's okay whatever i don't care Stop saying bad shit about him in my play in my because in my he's vicinity. the guy I'm dating. Yeah. This is the facts. And don't trust your dad to help you with your uh mental health and like Well, yeah, yeah I think fucking, you yeah. probably know you that. You know that, yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, fucking um Yeah, I, I, I don't think I would man, live yeah. with your dad anymore if he's yeah, just gonna fuck, go yeah, in no. your room and clean God, your no. shit up. And just set as many boundaries as you need to with your mom to make sure that while you live there is good. I think also because uh, you mentioned that you it's hard for you to feel safe anywhere. I think the idea, um, I think just a warning, like you know, I think the reason that you're clinging on to Joe so much is that he's already made you feel safe. But there are people out there that are going to make you feel safe when they're not safe, you know. Mm. And uh, I think it's healthy yeah. to have a bit of skepticism. I know, but skepticism in the beginning of a relationship is not good for the relationship. I mean, yeah, but also, like... You have to acknowledge that, like, you started dating and this... You started dating someone that used to have power over you. Yeah, that's... I mean, yeah, that's, It's a like, little weird, man. Because, like, if you guys break up and there's that power still over you, it's not gonna end well for you. Well, I mean, they don't have power because she moved. Yeah, I mean, thankfully, but, yeah. like, if... On the chance that you weren't, you know. But the fact that you had to move. The fact that you had to move. The fact that you've been, like, hiding it from the company, too. Like, if somebody, if your friend came to you and said, I'm dating this guy who's 10 years, 12 years older than me, and we've only been dating for three or four months, but I've known him for three years, and I moved so that when we go public with our relationship it's not gonna you know blah 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 there's already so many hoops that you've there's like so many things that you that did have been set up and like you had to hop through like yeah like you're giving away too much of yourself for this guy already and i think that's what people are being concerned about i don't think it's just the age gap i don't even think it's anything about Derek. honestly yeah whatever Derek's Derek's fucking past if, like if yeah. your mom wants to fuck Derek, let her go yeah, fuck Derek. yeah I don't, like, it's weird it's weird yeah <laughs> I don't know. But like you know if she, if she if it literally is just get back with Derek, the fucking cheater i don't i don't know i tell your mom yeah, she's fucking, an idiot yeah like fucking dumb as hell <laughs> yeah so yeah no fucking but i i think it's it is if it is that you're you don't feel safe with anybody else and you somehow felt safe with this guy because i know what it feels like when you don't ever feel safe Mm. and then you find safety you just want to hold on to it forever but that doesn't mean that there aren't problems and doesn't mean that it is just because you feel safe doesn't mean that it is you know yeah Yeah. that is true so i mean Uh, it's something to think about but i'm not going to tell you to break up with this guy i don't know i don't fucking know yeah (laughs) i just i'm just like that's just be Red a little flags. keen. Be That's a little it. keen Just with this keen. guy. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think people that care for you are. Your mom should have said this. <laughs> your mom, instead of being like "fuck that thirty-four-year-old," it's not the best way. Should have gotten that harsh. Yeah. No, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like when your when your parents tell you not to swear, you're gonna want to swear. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like shit, man. Uh, um, not to equate your relationship to swearing, but. <laughs> 
I mean, that's the that's the analogy, I guess. But yeah, it, I mean, yeah, it's also hard for parents to see their children as adults, you know. Oh yeah, for sure. It, it yeah. does kind of oh, seem God. like they both infantilize you a little bit. Yeah. Now that I think about it, like they clean your room for clean you, clean your room for you, and then are getting really invested on in your love life. Yeah, it's, so it's like you're an individual; you get to make your own decisions. You do get to deal with the consequences of those decisions. That's the thing. Yeah, you know, your mom should have been like, "Hey, listen, I don't agree with it. It's your life. You get to do whatever you want, but I'm going to be here for you if things go south. Yeah, or whatever. Blah blah blah. Yeah, because your mom is also an individual, and she's allowed to be skeptical. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. As long as she's healthy about it, yeah. not just being like weirdly like, this is not going to work out and don't come crying back to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because it's weird because I also had a mom that would do that where she would be like, how do you know this guy does work here? Did you look it up? Did you go to the fucking website and figure out if he works there? And I'd be like, mom, that's fucking crazy. That's a little, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> that's a little wild. A little sus, yeah. And, uh, I, but I mean... Maybe the, maybe your mom has some like gap. Make maybe your mom was in a gap relationship and she has some trauma there. Maybe, yeah. It might be that she's having a trauma response. And Which almost, I mean, yeah. Like I mean, fucking, I won't blame your mom for having that response then. But like, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. She should also be upfront about it. Well, you I do. Guess. Even when you have a trauma response, you have to deal with the consequences. Yeah, she's still not being great to her daughter. Oh no, yeah, of course not. I don't know. I think it's a complicated issue for who's good and who's bad. I yeah. think it's just complicated yeah I don't know, yeah complicated. it's just complicated yeah fucking solved it solved it though yeah i don't know i don't know you know uh, yeah do whatever you want man remember remember guys you can you can fuck a 32 year old but don't date him <sighs> and charge him for it <laughs> make I him d- fucking pay for it guys just stop talking to us about your fucking age gap relationships like it's okay God try, damn, you know to, what we're gonna say. You know what we're gonna say. To be fair, all these people did say... Well, actually, I, I, you know, that's actually kind of funny that you say that. I remember our first TikTok that went viral was about an age gap relationship where it was like... Oh, they were mad 27 and 37. Yeah, everyone was mad about it. So this is our penance. It's like, no, this mine's good. It wasn't 27 and 30. It was like 46 and 27. 26 year old man. It was a 26 year old man and a 46 year old woman. No, it was the it was a red story. Yeah. Yes. I wait. I no, because I read it. I was. I was. I no, read this. I was reading it. No, I was reading the story, the first one. Oh, back okay. at our old place. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then I'm wrong. Thirty-seven, twenty-seven. Yeah, but there was one where it was forty-six, and yeah, I do, yeah this lady right. left her husband over for some guy she met on Reddit. Yeah, and we that's were like, right, yeah. oh, okay, and we she read it. Yeah, she worded it like a businesswoman. And I was like, I fucking hate you because you sound like a manager. Yeah. Of Kinko's. Okay. I do remember that one. Yeah. I love that one because all the comments were like. Yeah, well, uh, 46 isn't old, and it's like, well, it doesn't yes, matter. Yes, it is. 46 is old. Anything over 23 now is old. <laughs> As of yesterday, guys. It's, I mean, listen, it doesn't mean like, oh, okay, fine. 46 is young. You yeah. get to date all the fucking 20-year-olds <laughs> that you want, and nobody gets to look at you sideways. <laughs> no, God. we all get to look at each other sideways for whatever you want. You're wearing purple? Ew. Yeah. Fucking ill. No, I get it. I get what you're saying. That yeah. just means I'm a judgmental person. Yeah. And you get to look at me sideways for being judgmental. That's how the fucking world works. Shut up. God. <laughs> so this next story mm-hmm. comes to us from Echo. He, him. This is a dope ass name. How's it spelled? E-C-H-O. Like Echo. Oh, okay. Like Echo. echo. I thought it was going to be Echo like from... um, Like a gecko? <laughs> like a, with two Ks? Yeah, but not... uh, But from uh, Arcane. Oh yeah, remember that show? I do remember that show. That show that no one remembers <laughs> <laughs> because it was all released as in one season. Because of Ma- uh, Imagine, because of Dragons. Imagine Dragons, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, the, the most song. forgettable ma- band on the most forgettable show. Yeah, that no, was a good show. It was a good show. All right, so the story comes to us from Echo. He him. Nice. Am I the asshole for cutting off my friend for their ex? Hi, PWSTR. I found your podcast on TikTok, watched every single clip on your page, and was hoping you could weigh in on this conflict I've had with two friends because I'm about to graduate college and move away for grad school, and I wanted to clear the air before I could see them regularly anymore. Okay. Also, I fear I may have made this too long, but I don't want to trim anything to be biased, so feel free to cut out any unnecessary details. Never. I don't edit these. We don't. It's too much work, and it's also a disservice to you, the listener. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. 
I, 22 male, met S, 22 non-binary, four years ago on Tinder right before I started college. I think S was attracted to me, but I didn't really reciprocate their feelings, and I got busy with college while they dropped out of school, so mm. we agreed to just be friends. Over okay. the next couple of years, we mostly chatted online. I noticed that sometimes I would go long stretches of time without hearing from S, and then they would reappear and tell me that they have, had been in a relationship and gotten dumped. It became sort of a pattern for them to only chat with me when they were single, and mostly use me as a therapist for their problems, but I figured that since we weren't that close, it was something I could look past in exchange for their company. Yeah, I get that. When we were 19, S and I got a bit closer. We started hanging out in person. They once drove me home when I got too drunk at a stranger's house, and they were really good company. Aww. At the end of that academic year, I subleased an apartment and the same, at the same time S started dating M, 21 male. M and I became fast friends. He had a rough situation with his parents at home, so I let him stay at my apartment for a few days after knowing him for less than 24 hours. I trusted him instantly. We both bonded over being trans, S wasn't out at this point, and just generally clicked in a way that S and I didn't. We okay. basically lived together throughout the summer, and I visited M's apartment regularly during the school year afterwards. I could tell that S and M's relationship was getting toxic, but between classes and two jobs, I basically just witnessed it slowly falling apart. Oh. S would talk to me about their problems with M. A lot. Oh, no. They told me that M wasn't res uh, respecting their poly identity, that M's mental health was getting so bad that they couldn't talk about their problems in a healthy way, and that M was jealous of me and S's friendship and asked, quote, why don't you just date my name instead? On the other hand, M never talked to me about his relationship with S at all. Yeah. I always felt like he was just trying to, trying to keep the things jovial between us to focus on having fun with me, and I didn't press him that much. Things came to a head on my 21st birthday when both S and M got COVID, so neither of them could visit for my birthday. Mm. M announced that he was going to rehab across the country for six months to sort out his mental health, oh. and afterwards he would continue his education at an out-of-state school. He wouldn't have access to a phone or any way to connect, contact us uh, until he graduated to the rehab program. Wow. A few weeks after he left, M mailed S a letter formally breaking up with them. Wow. Wow. This is where I felt like my relationship with S really started to change. S started contacting me nearly every day to talk about their feelings. They became very, emo very emotionally dependent on me. Yeah. They made confessions about their relationship with M that were really serious. Like once they told me that M hit them and shouted verbally abusive things at them. I tried to comfort S, but I also expressed that it was difficult to hear these accusations while M was unreachable in rehab and basically unable to give his side of the story. I felt like the relationship was probably toxic on both sides, and I felt like S was only giving me half the story, so I asked that we didn't speak about M until he got back. S got upset about this, saying that I wasn't a good friend for listening to them. I think they were also upset because this was one of the first times I had set up a boundary with them. S also picked up a lot of bad habits in the months where M was in rehab. They started binge drinking, then they cut, ba uh, they cut back but continued to drink enough that they were constantly drunk for days at a time. Then they would insist that they would be sober, but only drink socially, and started asking to hang out with me as an excuse to continue drinking. This really sucked because my mom suddenly got sick and died, and I wanted to support my friends, but it felt like S would only show up and ask if we could drink. In June, M came back to town, and we reconnected and got coffee. I asked M about his relationship with S, and he basically confirmed what I suspected, that the relationship was toxic on both sides. M told me that he never felt comfortable talking about his relationship with S to me because he didn't want to stress me out because I was friends with both of them. M said that he had always wanted a monogamous relationship, uh, but S pressured him to become poly and insisted that eventually M would be ready to open up their relationship. He said that S also talked a lot about asking, adding me to their relationship, something that I didn't know about at the time and was not interested in, Wow, which is what made M initially jealous. M also made more serious accusations, like telling me that S ignored M's consent in their relationship and pressured him for sex. M concluded it all with a statement about how he didn't want to ruin my friendship with S, since S and I had been friends longer than us. M also apologized for putting me in such a weird position and said he was totally okay with me and S staying friends, as long as M didn't have to see S in person. Since this conversation, M and I have stayed friends, we frequently chat online, and hang out with each other whenever he visits town. Unfortunately, I don't know if my relationship with S is even salvageable at, this, salvageable at this point. S started seeing someone a few months after M went to rehab, but they mentioned that I knew their new partner because we were mutuals on Twitter. 
Oh. I was probably an asshole here, but I asked S to please not talk about the relationship to me as my mental health was bad, and I was still trying to juggle school and work. And I didn't want to deal with another repeat of what happened between S and M. S seemed really hurt by this, by, but agreed. Then stopped talking to me for several weeks. When they finally contacted me again, they were single again. We talked for a few weeks before they disappeared again, and I heard they were, they're currently in a poly, a poly relationship. Okay. Currently, we still haven't spoken in months. They still follow my social media and watch my stories, but haven't made any effort to reach out. I think they know that I've been still talking to M too. I know that my relationship with S hasn't been stellar, but I still appreciate uh, how our friendship used to be. Since I'm graduating, I feel like it's, I've lost a lot of friendships over the years, though through other people graduating and getting too busy to socialize. I'm trying to reach out to people to reconcile before I move away, but I'm not sure about my relationship with S. Is it worth reaching out to S and trying to be, again, to be their friend, or have I already picked a side? Am I the asshole for picking, for picking cutting off S for their ex? What do you think? What do I think? I think it's complicated. <laughs> yeah, it's really complicated. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. I Fuck. don't know. I, um... I, I thought I would have an answer between the time of me initially reading the story <laughs> to here um, and then rereading it. I'm like, I think this you is a, shouldn't have gotten involved in their relationship at all. Maybe. I mean, because like, I feel like. Listen, like, I think the toxic on both sides, there's no way of knowing if either person is lying. I don't like, you know, I think it's a little strange that somebody tells you that they got hit and screamed at and you were like let me let me hear that other guy i want to hear the well, other guy I, yeah because i wonder what the history is there then of like right. is especially like, if like if they're a known liar well because I mean, well, um i guess uh it just sounds like you didn't really trust s ever yeah especially when i think s was um talking a lot more about the relationship than m right yeah and uh, m wasn't really saying anything but then s was saying a lot of shit about their um, partner yeah. yeah so i guess you were like oh they're just talking shit again but i'm like i don't know that's I weird think, yeah <laughs> like what if that happened what if that did happen what if some, they got hit and then you're just like mm, nah <laughs> like, well, is it even is it even i don't know i feel like it's physical assault it is no i mean uh, yeah but i, I wonder like <sighs> you can't like be like my thing is, like, you can't say, oh, well, it doesn't matter because I'm not very, ha you know, I'm not very happy with you as a friend right now. So your assault doesn't matter, but his assault does matter. His emotional abuse does matter, but your physical abuse doesn't matter. Mm. Like, to me, that doesn't mean anything. I just feel like this was a relationship that you shouldn't have been involved in. I think the worst thing that has happened is that S crossed a lot of boundaries but then that to me i'm like what i'm gonna you know publicly shame somebody for crossing boundaries we never do that no they're just somebody who just doesn't understand boundaries and it also like the alcoholism i'm not gonna shame somebody for being an alcoholic either that's a disease so it just yeah. sounds like it was a lot of mentally ill situ you know shit going on people that needed a lot of help yeah. And you didn't know what to do, which is normal. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'm not gonna know blame what to do. you for being like I, unable to or unequipped. You I, know, I just think you gotta think of the situation in a objection uh, objectionable way. Is you know, objective way. There you yeah. go. <laughs> that's the word. <laughs> um, yeah, you it's like it. fucking. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I guess like um, it sounds like he didn't even say that he didn't hit her. Hit. I'm sorry. Hit them. Yeah, yeah. Um, I fucking I don't know. I really so no fucking why. Why is it like? Oh yeah, I knew that S was toxic. So there you go. You deserve <laughs> to get hit. What? I, I don't. Yeah, I, <laughs> I think don't like think you're saying that, but it's like it feels a little bit like. Well, I, I yeah, I don't think you're saying. I don't think you've done anything necessarily like <sighs> too wrong. I think those two just. A weren't good together, no. and were also shitty to each other. No, I think but S I needs think help. But yeah, and I, but I think I do think it's a little bit weird to pick when both sides are shitty. Pick one side over the other. Yeah, it's a when little both, strange. Yeah, I think just I, because one is nicer. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's weird. I that's the only thing that I think is weird. But other than that, I don't think. Yeah, you should. I don't think you should have known. Or you shouldn't I, have been I, this, any of that stuff. Yeah, I don't, yeah. yeah, and that's not your fault. They were putting it on 
well, you. Well, S was. I S think was, that's yeah. the real issue that I think you have is that you you also know that you shouldn't have known any of this stuff. S shouldn't yeah. have told you. And that's probably why you're more susceptible to M is because M didn't tell you that stuff until after the relationship was over. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I really have no fucking idea. <laughs> but if it truly is toxic on both sides, then I don't really know why you would continue to still be chill with, with one and not yeah. the other. Because I don't know if you'd want that that person would be worthy of being your friend in the first place if they're going to be yeah. sh- uh, shitty and toxic. Yeah, like if I was S and I was... Without like... Uh, sorry. I, if I was S and I had a friend and I was trying to tell them about my relationship like i really don't know blah 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 this relationship he's the fucking fuckhead blah 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 i don't know what to do blah 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 and then you're like okay sure fine i'll listen to you now and then my partner moves across the country sends me a letter breaks up with me (laughs) after i've been through physical assault and uh (laughs) um uh and uh screaming and all this toxicity yeah and uh, then you're like, okay, let me go have tea with that guy. I think I would be like, I don't know if I want to be that person's friend anymore. Yeah, true. Yeah. And I think that's just something you got to accept. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree with that a lot. Yeah. These were your actions and uh, this is the consequences. I think, I don't know. I think it's weird that you're looking from the point of view of M and not from S. Completely. Yeah. Completely. Like- because, I mean, assuming that what both of them have said yeah. is true, there's not really, they're not really great I was waiting for people. M to be like, S was lying. I yeah, thought that was what was going to happen. Yeah, but no, it was like a toxic, we, we were both toxic. We were both in a silly, goofy mood. Yeah. If two, okay, if, okay, rule of thumb, if two people in a relationship, uh, come out of it and both of them say they're they were both just in a silly goofy mood i wouldn't want to be friends with either, with either yeah and i think you'd find much more better friends especially if you're going into like uh like if you're moving away to like grad school you'll probably find new people to actually oh, be yeah. cool with and it's something to i guess just give up on man yeah which i mean i'm sorry it sucks sometimes but like fucking people drift apart people become different people and grow and change in different ways, sometimes for better, sometimes for worse. I think definitely S needs to go seek mental uh, health help like yeah. M did. Yeah, I think they both need to fucking... Yeah. And I guess I guess maybe I can understand being a little bit more amicable to M because M decided to go and take into a hold rehab of... and take a hold of whatever. But, then but still, it's me, like, I'm like, you still shouldn't... I guess, like, that's the... The difference is, okay, either you self-medicate or you get help, you know? Yeah. And what S did was self-medicate. And fucking, yeah. Like, yeah, if you have, like, these fucking issues, it's going to, you know, show up. And, and I'm not saying you have to be around an alcoholic. Nobody does. Oh, no, yeah, no. I, I will never imply that. But, I mean, I guess m- maybe some food for thought is, you know, maybe S is somebody that, uh has a has an addiction and i mean you know and yeah. that's why they were reacting to trauma that way now it sucks it does suck it sucks and a lot it's just a shitty situation all around hmm. fuck man yeah i don't know i don't think you're i don't know i don't think anybody really needs to be held i don't think anyone needs to be called an asshole here no i don't think so I don't think either. You're the asshole. i don't really think they're i think they're assholes to each other and that's really as far as it goes. I think uh, as crossing a boundary, as crossing a boundary is shitty. Yeah, but I I don't know their whole relationship together was weird. <laughs> and, I mean, it sounds so, like, like S has some problems because they keep getting dumped. Yeah, and then uh, it does suck that S is kind of just using you for like therapy. therapy. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know. I could definitely understand. Maybe uh, I I don't know. Yeah. People are weird. Yeah, I don't, I don't fucking talk to anyone. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I'm not good. I'm not good at these social questions. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I guess you're not really not, not that big asshole. of an, not an asshole. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't think you need to put blame on anything, really. Yeah, it was just like something that happened. Yeah, it was just a thing that happened. Yeah, solved it. 
All right. This is from anonymous. She, they, am I the asshole for planning to cut off my best friend? No, I female 18 have had the same friend group for about six years, uh, which was, is getting bigger each year to the point where there was almost always drama. My best friend, female 17 was one of my closest in the entire group. And we both supported each other through many difficult situations over the years. For many of these years, however, she was the quote-unquote drama queen of our group, and her dramatic and sometimes bitchy attitude towards us, causing lots of arguing in the group. About a year ago, she started going on multiple dates with a week with men, 21-22, she met on Facebook dating. I didn't know there was Facebook dating. Facebook has a dating service? What? <laughs> that's a little That's a little silly. That's, a little, that's, that's not the point, but it's silly. But I mean, okay, yeah. Um, I confronted her many times about the safety concerns of what she was doing, but she carried on nonetheless. Uh, the Once again, the friend is 17. <laughs> uh, dating 21, 22-year-old people. Woo! One day on a group camping trip while drunk, she sat me down and told me that her therapist told her to confront me with an entire list of everything she didn't like about me. What the fuck? <laughs> Who is this therapist? Who is this therapist? And how do I sign up? <laughs> Just tell me to go and be a messy bitch every day. Okay, sure. Uh, front and center was my opinion about her dating older men when she was under 18 and looks very childlike. This was the last straw for me, and I told my friends that I planned to stop contact with her slowly over the year. Why is the therapist is like, the- totally do that, bitch? <laughs> Why is the therapist like that? You also, you don't need to do it slowly. You can do it just real quick. You're good. Don't worry. <laughs> don't don't worry. You have to do it your, slow your, your friend <laughs> met a fucking adult as a minor on the equivalent of like fucking MySpace meets. Like, I, come on. Yeah. Fucking get out of here. Yeah, this is weird. Yeah. What 21 year olds using Facebook? <laughs> Connect with 17 year olds, I guess. Weirdo, yeah. Stop Jesus. contact with her slowly over the year before going to college and eventually cutting her off. My plan was revealed to her by another friend of mine, causing her to get mad, and the entire group cut me off. My That's sister- why I don't tell people. That's why you just do it. Don't plan it. Just That's why you do don't it. get into big ass friend groups because they yeah. always suck ass. Okay. My sister told me I was in the right, but I feel bad for how everything ended and how many good friends I lost because of this. Am I the asshole? No, no your sister's right. <laughs> your simple. sister's right. Simple as that. You, your, your sister was right from the beginning. These people would rather be friends with somebody who is dating 21, 22 year old men as a minor. So you gotta get free then, alcohol, Sarah. How are you gonna do it? My therapist, my it. therapist told me if I get free alcohol from an adult man and then who I bring a therapist? list. A my, list of everything I hate about you. everything I hate about you. How much is is this person talking about you in their <laughs> therapy? Yeah, it's just like I got this friend shit. and she's real mad at me for dating 20-year-olds. Uh well what you should do then is you should uh, the, the therapist you is totally confront her. Plot to us, she's dating the therapist. I know, right? <laughs> That's what it is. Fucking have fucking. like a 23-year-old male therapist and get a uh, fucking <laughs> hot young right. 17-year-old. <laughs> Looks Come like through a, my door and I'm like, looks like a tiny baby dude. in her face. It's like, yeah, Jesus. And she's just like, I just love 20 year old cock, <laughs> but my friend doesn't like it. You should totally, oh, you should, oh, fuck. Oh, you, um, oh fuck her. Just, Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, that's fucked up. Yeah, it's awful. Yeah. I don't even like joking about it, honestly. It's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, no, you're not the asshole. You're not you're the right, asshole. right, and your sister's right, and thank God your sister's right. Holy shit, if you didn't have anyone in your life that telling you- That girl is wild. She probably needs to, a better- She needs a better therapist. She is a better therapist, and she needs to be- She needs to be taken away from Facebook. She needs to get a tattoo on her head that says her age. Yeah, <laughs> just switch it out every year. <laughs> because, um- uh, Yeah, wow. Jesus um, Christ. Hmm. Uh, yeah, you're not the asshole. No, you're not. I don't- uh, Listen- not the, yeah, not every, tell her parents every week, man. Tell her parents. Tell her parents. Tell yes. her parents. Tell right, her parents. Right now. Every fucking week. It's the same number too. It's the same two fucking numbers. Seventeen and twenty-one. I know, right? It's just getting ridiculous, guys. It kinda you guys is. need to fucking stop this. <laughs> All right, <laughs> we solved it. We solved it. We solved we did. it we once solved again. It. Solving everything. Uh, just all all day solving it. Like detectives. <laughs> yeah, we're I'm a detective, Josh. At your service. Yeah.
All right, so this next story comes to us from Anonymous. She, her. Okay. Am I the asshole for breaking up with my two best friends after one of them assaulted me and the other took her side? I didn't read that first sentence. Wait a I read minute. this story. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. I just I'm going to say it. I'll, I'm, I'm gonna say no, but you guys always have the opportunity to surprise me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I've literally I wanted to state for the record I did read this story. I apparently cut out the words after they assaulted me, <laughs> so that came oh, as a shit. surprise to me. Fuck! Um, I love watching other podcasts that do this and seeing. Name them. We all know which one I'm talking about. You guys can invite us on whenever. It's cool. <laughs> yeah, please, please. Thank we want to show we'll, up. We'll, we'll, go, we'll go on any podcast. But, but yes. it literally is any anyone that does the Reddit stuff. And I hear somebody go, am I the asshole? And the other person goes, yes, immediately. Because I'm like, I've done that before. And literally, it's been about like dead babies. <laughs> Like, oh, my baby died and I got yeah, assaulted and I always I feel wait, like I wait, shit. I, I, that's why I always wait until after the thing is said. Yeah, yeah I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not going to prejudge ever, ever again. That's what I've learned from this. Okay, sorry. It's been two years since I broke up with my two best friends and I'm still really torn up about it because they were essentially my family all throughout college. Me, 25 female, my girl best friend, 25 female, and my boy best friend, 25 male, were basically inseparable for all of college and onward. Important note, my two best friends have been dating the entire time we were all friends. Cute. I was staying at my boy best friend's house one night. We were all, uh, all over there and had some other people too. When my girl best friend lost it. She had severely untreated BPD, and to my understanding, had picked a fight with the, with the boy best friend upstairs before everything blew up. She ran downstairs with no pants and ran outside, crying and screaming about how much she hates her life. Immediately, we all go to help her, help her, calm her down, and get her back inside. I was tasked with keeping her car keys from her so she didn't drive off to God knows where. Yeah. When we went out to help her, she essentially told us all to fuck off because she wanted to get in her car to drive off and kill herself. Obviously, we weren't going to let that happen. Oh my fucking God. She exclaims, I have a spare key in my car and dashes for it. At first, I went after her, but then I realized I had her keys and could lock her out. I hit the button and the car went beep beep. As soon as she realized what I'd done, that's when it got bad. She ran straight for, for me <coughs> and assaulted me. I don't want to get into details, but our other friend had to physically pin her down and lock me inside the house to get her to stop. Oh my God. She had pulled so hard on the keys around my neck that the chain broke and I had bruising for a little bit. <coughs> Shit. Boy best friend talked her down for about an hour and they left. I didn't hear from my girl best friend after that that with any kind of update or apology. A boy best friend visited me a few times and every single time he'd say things like, quote, we should have been there for her, the other best friend. We'd let her get to that point. We should be better friends. Okay. He was somehow convinced or he somehow convinced himself that it was our fault she did that, which I wasn't buying for one fucking second. I decided I needed indefinite space from both of them, which wasn't too hard to get during a pandemic. Yeah. It's been six months since that event occurred. I have checked on my two best, fr uh, on my two best friends via other friends who <laughs> told me really nothing has changed, but I still hold out hope. My boy best friend calls me one day and says I need to get over this for the sake of the friendship, and I owe my girl best friend clarity. Okay, well that's fucked up. Yeah. Keep in mind she's not she has not formally apologized or updated me at all at this point, but is expecting me to reach out to her. I tell him that it's I'm not gonna happen and that I'm taking space I need before the, I'm ready to be friends again. Yeah. The next day she sent me a message from Facebook. Imagine the least amount of accountability and the most gaslighting, and that's what I got. That, Things like yeah. she has BPD, yeah. Yeah. Things like Quote, my dad died six, my dad died, parentheses, six years ago, and I didn't get closure, so you need to give me closure and make a decision. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any fucking sense. Kill with her on the dad dying thing, though. But, like, still, it's not a, you're using your dad's death. Oh, it's kind of shitty, it's, yeah. Yeah. I fell for it, too. She gave me the <laughs> ultimatum of giving, oh, getting over it and talking to her in the next <laughs> two weeks or forsaking both of their friendships. I panic and agreed. The next day, I get a text that hadn't gone through immediately because my phone was being weird from my boy best friend. He started picking a fight with me over weird, obscure fights from years ago that my girl best friend and I had gotten into. 
It was so weird and so unnecessary, so I sent him something back along the lines of, you're being a shitty friend, fuck off. Yeah. It was then that I realized that both weren't my friends anymore and hadn't been for a long time. Yeah. Friends don't treat you like this and I don't want them in my life. This was what I was going to get. I sent another message to my girl best friend and I broke up with her. From what I know post-event, she hates me for saying yes to meeting and then taking it back 24 hours later. That's fair, but frankly, I didn't and still don't feel safe being in the same room as her. I mean, yeah, she assaulted you. Yeah. So. I then sent a message to my boy best friend doing the same. Shortly after that message, the girl best friend emails me, she blocked me on everything as soon as I broke up with her, and says to give our boy best friend another chance. She admits that she used his phone to send me those text messages oh. because she was mad at me for not reaching out, and he let her, but he realized it was a mistake and is sorry. That wasn't the nail in the coffin for me. Yeah, yeah. How do you even know any of that is true? Yeah, that's, yeah, I don't, <clears throat> that's weird to me. Yeah, that's yeah. strange. Since then, it's been complicated because they have a ton of mutual friends, and they all want. To, uh, they all went to their wedding last year or were in the wedding. Oh God, I never married. expected an invite or anything, but I did expect some respect for the relationship we'd had. On my end, I did my best not to, to not tell anyone because I didn't want to embarrass them or cause some weird he said, she said crap. That went out the window when they invited someone to their wedding who had done horrible things to me, and we shit-talked them for almost six years. They invited her out of spite for me, uh, out of spite for me, and posted the photo of her at the wedding in a group chat we all happened to be in. That's how I found out. And then, as we're all musically, and then as we're all musically oriented people, of course, the boy best friend wrote a diss track about me. <laughs> oh parentheses, it wasn't very good at all, but it still hurt my feelings. Yeah, it's a diss track, and sent it out to our mutual friends. Jesus uh, Christ! Feel like, what the fuck? <laughs> I feel like I've become the villain in my story, but I'm not sure why. So, am I the asshole for breaking up with them? Should I have been more understanding since my friend has mental health issues? Or is this just a boatload of toxicity that I escaped from? I'm not sure because I'm too emotionally invested, so I'd love to know y'all's perspective. All right, listener, I'm going to give you a soundbite that you can send to all your friends. Do I, should I be beatboxing? Yeah, you should be boxing, like fucking... No, beatboxing. Beatboxing? No, I just want to give you a little sound, but just, okay, I wanna, go, just go. Like, a little, like a little clip. Go. You guys are the worst friends. You all fucking suck. All right, there you go. You're not the asshole. Yeah, and you know what? I can understand, like, <laughs> fucking with BPD. Y yeah, you get some pretty harsh, I want to fucking kill myself vibes. You yeah, know? no. And definitely, like, she was not very stable in that moment. So I totally understand being like, yeah, we're being shitty friends. Like, we should have brought her to a fucking therapist or a fucking mental health. We should have urged her to get help. That should have been a Baker Act, I think, yeah. Yeah, you know, um, but, if, but, but, I but. Uh, here's the thing. Okay, <laughs> I, I have experience with uh, <laughs> people who had BPD, and, um. Me too, yeah. Fucking, they, they need help. But when they, it's also it's manageable. Like, it's it a is manageable, manageable thing. Per, uh, personality disorder. Yeah, but like when no one is like nobody is urging them. Hey, listen, this is not normal. Like we should and like, get you help. Yeah, <laughs> and like the boyfriend and your boy best friend isn't like the fact that it's still not happening is also shitty. Like, yeah, he's right. He said, you know what fucking we should have been better and then didn't do anything after that yeah like that's the her. thing it's it's kind of it's like patting yourself on the back while there's a fire going on and yeah, you decide like, not to fucking yeah and you're a firefighter and you're a firefighter yeah. yeah or you're a police officer in front of us you're, you're someone with a phone that can yeah. call a firefighter yeah, yeah like literally no you should be helping people because i've known pe uh people with bpd who have gone through suicidal tendencies and then also who have gotten help and have become wonderful people well, I mean, they were always wonderful people, but they've always they've uh, been able to manage their emotions, and that's what BPD is. It's like <clears throat> basically you're just you're in the moment right now, you know, and you're think your emotions are at a fucking high, and then you know if you're depressed, you have maximum depression. Uh, this is something that yeah. Josh's mom deals with like Im immensely. Yeah. And is specifically a psychiatrist for people with BPD. Yeah, so... Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, it's really, like... It's... It, it's You got assaulted, man. <laughs> That's, like, the thing. Yeah, no, yeah. You, the matter of fact is, you got assaulted. person with BPD is trying to manipulate you. For some reason, you're her target. And, uh... Yeah. Needs mental health 
help <laughs> right now and nobody in her life is helping her <laughs> and yeah which is like just really fucking letting her fuck with you which is weird and stupid bpd doesn't yeah. just mean you get to be an asshole you don't get all a the free time. pass yeah there should still be an apology even you know? after you're out of that like frantic I've known B- state, I guess. People yeah. with BPD who are assholes. I've known people with BPD who are wonderful people who are not That's the assholes. Thing. Yeah, I've known normal people who are assholes and normal people who are nice. Well, yeah, quote unquote, people without BPD, not normal people. Yeah, yeah I get yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it, 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 BPD or not, that you're still either an asshole or not an asshole. You know what I mean? Yeah, like you know. I think that's the real two. Those are the two genders: assholes and not assholes. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, like it sucks. It, it's not. <laughs> Like you shouldn't feel bad for wanting to set up a boundary and not wanting to communicate with someone who yeah. assaulted you. And Even setting a boundary isn't a punishment. And also having mental illness doesn't mean you're free from consequences. Uh, yeah. She did assault you. Literally, yes. She should like at least apologize and be like, Hey, I'm so sorry. I have BPD and when that happened, I wasn't medicated or I wasn't I wasn't going to therapy. I wasn't doing these things. Um and blah yeah. blah blah and usually people with BPD who go through those things end up being like oh fuck I really fucked up a lot <laughs> and yeah the, so like you know fucking because it's a terrible disease to uh, not disease disorder to fucking deal with hmm. it's awful and so I mean I can totally understand being like nah man I don't want to get assaulted again yeah that's a normal uh, yeah, that's a response. normal thing that's a normal response yeah. But it, it, but it's also like fuck them for also like spiting you with like someone that the boyfriend telling you to get over it is yeah, so go fucked fuck up, yourself. Man. Yeah, go fuck yourself on that, and then inviting someone that you all three of you shit talk <sighs> that hurt you specifically to their wedding. I wonder if it was like, hey, this person hurt this person. Maybe we'll talk to them to get more clarity on the situation, and then that person just says like, yeah, that person's always a piece of shit. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> fuck them. <laughs> Who cares? Who yeah. cares? Fuck them. They suck. They just ended up sucking. Yeah. God damn, man. People suck sometimes. It sucks. Sometimes people suck and you don't want them in your life. More than fair. Yeah. But yeah, fucking uh, not the asshole. He literally didn't do anything. Not the asshole. You did nothing. Fucking, you did you fucking nothing. And you got punished for being assaulted. Which is ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Uh, fuck those friends though. Yeah, Holy shit. Fuck, fuck those them. friends, man. Holy shit. You can send them <laughs> this image now. Fuck those friends for not getting her help. Yeah, honestly, yeah. That's the real that's the biggest tragedy yeah. here. And you don't even have to get her help because she fucking assaulted you. She assaulted you, you. yeah. <laughs> you Other people it, need to, to take shit. an initiative at some point. Yeah. You <laughs> when you when you're when you get stabbed, it's not on you to fucking get the stabber help. Yeah, no. Other people around you need to get the stab or that, figure out why someone's stabbing people. Yeah. When yeah. So, when you have a friend that is clamoring to get in her car so she can go kill herself, you need to have an intervention. Baker X, guys. I'm telling you. Well, I mean, maybe yeah. not even that. You know, sometimes. Intervention, though. Yeah. You're yeah. Right. Like, have an intervention and be like, hey, listen, you're fucking. That's not a good thing to do. This is very bad. Why? Us as friends, we don't want you to kill yourself, man. What's going on? Yeah. Why are you assaulting people? How can we help you, man? How can we get you the help you need? Well, she assaulted her because fucking she wanted to kill herself so bad. Yeah, true. It's, you know, nobody, if we don't have BPD, we're not going to be able to understand it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, I don't know. Yeah, but I don't think you're not the asshole. Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely don't think as soon as you're assaulted, you're not the, you're asshole. Not the asshole. Yeah. So, um, yeah, solved it though. Solved it, bro. Fuck. Yeah. I got this story, Sarah. I, I am. Bring it out. Come on. Let's I'm go. Doing it. Fucking let's fucking go. <clears throat> this is from anonymous. She, her. Am I the asshole for not wanting my husband to go to his high school reunion? Me no. and my husband. <laughs> as someone who also doesn't go to my high school reunion. Fucking no, baby. Well, Wait a minute. All right. Oh, okay. Shit. Me and my husband have known each other since I was 13 years old. And before we went from best friends to dating, he was in a three and a half year relationship with a girl from his class in high school. They basically dated all throughout high school and were very important to each other. But eventually he realized it wasn't right as our love for each other has always been more than friendly. We were just lying to ourselves not to lose the friendship. Uh, He not to lose our friendship. He admitted his feelings for me and broke up with her, but it was super hard for him at the time and she was both she was furious with the both of us, which I understood. But I knew we belonged together 
<laughs> and so did he. This was the right thing to do. Since then, neither of us had seen or heard from her. We dated for three years before getting married, and we've been married for two years now. So it's been five years since this whole thing. But now that his high school reunion is coming up, the bitter feelings came back to me, and I told him I don't feel comfortable with him going, not only because she is going to be there, but also because of the whole class who've known them as a couple. I feel uneasy even imagining him back in that group remembering those years. He completely understood and agreed not to go, but now I wonder if I'm being petty. Am I the asshole? Ooh. Um, I don't know, because at one hand, I'm like, why do you care? Yeah, especially anymore. for like, I mean, I guess like the my my kicker is You've been like with him for five years. Even with him for five years, it's been five years since I. It's been five years since high school. Is yeah. that what it is? Okay, yeah. so it's been five years since high school. Jesus, it's been fucking five years since I. I'm old as fuck. Yeah, it's uh, been more than five years for <laughs> fucking me. Fucking Jesus. It's just me. Yeah, I didn't get invited. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, fucking. Um, I don't. They're probably not having it because of COVID. Oh yeah, true. Yeah. Um, no, I um, I. <laughs> Um, I get the feeling. I get. I understand the feeling, but I think there's a bit of like, I would assume going if I were to go, theoretically go to high school reunion. Yeah, I wouldn't walk up to everyone and be like, "Why aren't you dating that person from high school?" Right. That's it's the like, one thing that I'm kind of like. Of course you're not. We're all different. That's the whole point. How dare all of you? How, you guys, why are you different? How, how are you, you different? Guys, how are you guys not in, in <laughs> Mr. Johnson's fifth period anymore? <laughs> You know, I think that's Guys, a little. It's three p.m. It's three p.m. It's uh, it's time to go. Yeah, Guys. it's time to leave school. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or Why else, are we here? Yeah, we got to get to the <laughs> school reunion at seven. No, yeah, no. It's um. Now, I mean, I get the feeling though. I understand the feeling. I think it's a little much. Yeah, that's I'd, my take on it. I think it's an insecurity. It's probably just an insecurity. But I, I'm also like, I'm not gonna blame you. I promise you, nobody cares. Yeah, I think Everyone's everybody too else involved is involved in their own lives. Married yeah, to somebody else or dating somebody else, worried about their own lives. Honestly, she's probably moved on about it. If she hasn't, that's fucking weird. That's weird. Yeah, and that <laughs> would be why I wouldn't. That go. would be what not to go. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Maybe if that's the case, then no, yeah, of course, yeah, you don't want any drama, unnecessary drama. It's stupid. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I mean, there there are there are regular reasons to not go to high school reunion. I have like twenty, but like yeah, I think you know, but yeah. like I don't. I think if that's the only reason, I think that's a little weird to me. I think that's a little not the best. The only person I'd look out for is her because you, you guys kind of slighted her. But like, yeah, if and you want to, like, maybe she has bad feelings because it's only been five years too. Yeah, that's it, not the very many. Still years. be a little fresh, yeah, yeah. But like, okay, if like you have this feeling at the ten year mark, that's, that's weird. Little, that's weird. To that's me. strange. I can maybe understand five years. Yeah. It's still a little fresh. Like I, it's still weird to me that I was in college three years ago, and like the, some of those feelings are still fresh. You know, that's true. Huh. Actually, two years ago. Uh, fuck, I'm. I think twenty three. I. I'm 23 years old. Time now, is so liquid, I think, baby. Yeah. In the in the pandemic, but um, yeah, I don't think you're like I don't, I don't want to call you an asshole. I think I I think it is a little bit petty, but I'm not gonna call you a complete asshole. I don't think it's petty. I think it's just an insecurity. Okay, yeah, that's that's that's, that's what it. I mean. Sorry, I not not petty. I think it's you, you use the word petty, so it's in my head right now. But it, it's just an insecurity. Yeah, that's all I think. I think you're just a little insecure about how your relationship started, which I don't think you should be. I think it's very high school. Like, you know, I think a lot of times it's like, oh, I'm going to break up with this person and go out with this other person, especially when you're young. So I don't really see that big of a problem. That being said, I you think weren't like cheating on their partner unless you were like emotionally cheating. Yeah. Or, or unless you did cheat. Yeah. I don't know. I think the only other thing I think maybe it probably I don't even think it might even be that much of an insecurity is that your partner was kind of quick on the. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. With like no complaints. Maybe there is something about like. Yeah, Your maybe they don't want to go it. too. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean that's fair then. That's not really an insecurity. It's just you both agree, like, oh yeah, fuck that person. That person. Yeah, I and mean, if it's been five years, then you know, skip the five because on the other hand, it is kind of close. A five year, yeah. Like Most of the people years? that are gonna be there still know each other because they all went to the same college. Like, yeah, yeah, true. So it's like, uh, mm, mm, I don't know. Maybe skip the five. Nobody goes to the five. Go to the ten. Maybe if you feel like it. Don't if you don't want to. But I would just worry about worrying about high school. Why do you worry so much about yeah. it? Don't most people don't even think about high school anymore. I don't. 
I do. I reminisce. All the time, baby. I reminisce on my rebel days, but that's it. I reminisce on my fucking incel days, baby. <laughs> Hell yeah, baby. <laughs> Christ. And I don't think people are like, I wonder if Johnny still thinks that I'm dating. What's his face? Nobody really thinks that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Not the asshole, though. Not, not, not the asshole. Nobody's really an asshole anymore. It's yeah, just like... It's, it's, come on. I uh, will tell you when you're an asshole. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. we, we will. Oh, we will. It, it is really hard to be an asshole, man. Yeah. You have to go out of your way to be an asshole. You have to, like, not care. You have to be care. really shitty and not care about things. Yeah. And also be an adult. Yeah. Oh, true. Yeah. Because I feel like if you're 14 and you're like, I don't care. Like that one we had last week, which I still <laughs> think is so funny. I think you do care. You're just a teenager. Yeah, just don't don't lie to us. Mother effort. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Solved it, though. Fucking solved it. All right. Last story. Last story of the night. Oh. Last story of the night. So this last story comes to us from Scranoma. That's a dope name. S-C-R-A-N-O-M-A. She, her. Bro, Scranoma? That's fucking awesome. Yeah. All right. I'm going to give a very, I'm going to give you a spoiler warning, not the asshole. Oh, but, shit. Okay. Yeah. Am I the asshole? When I was 12 years old, my mom found a summer house that we can rent for summer vacation. So we started going there every year for 10 day vacations. The house has three apartments. Two is for rent. One is the owner's apartment where they live. The owners were an old man and his wife. They have a 50 year old son who lives with them. He is disabled because he had an accident where he, when he was 11 where he almost died. Oh, God. Basically, he is really clumsy and he behaves like a child. An annoying child. The owner told us that we can just call them if he is bothering us and they will send him to his room or tr- to do something else. He was always trying to hang out with me, touch me, hug me, kiss me. It was very disturbing as a young girl, but my mom just laughed. I was begging her to tell the owner Fuck. to keep him away from me, but my mom said she wouldn't, won't do it, and I'm selfish because we can't be rude to a disabled person. When I was 16, that is when my mom started taking it seriously after he asked her if I would be happy to marry him. She tried to keep him away from me, but that was never really successful. She still refused to talk to the owner. I'm 20, what? so from now on, I'm not going with them on a vacation because I have a boyfriend and we are going separately. This problem is solved, but I felt like my security and feelings should have been more important. And just because he is disabled, he doesn't have the right to sexually harass me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, fuck. What the fuck, Skranoma? (laughs) Shit, Skranoma. I'm so sorry. I'm very sorry. Yeah, this is fucked up, man. Why did your mom not... He was trying to hug, kiss, and get on... Like, yeah, that that was assault. Yeah. I'm sorry. Like, Jesus, man. That's still. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I've, I've been in situations before where, um, like, there was a guy at my high school that would, like, follow girls and, like, would also, like, hug them. And I'm 90% sure he had some sort of, uh, disability, like, learning disability. And I remember being like young and naive and I was just like, oh no, just a hug or whatever. And then he like, he like really followed me like over the next couple of weeks to the point where like I couldn't get away from him. And so I totally understand that feeling, but I think I also am like, he just doesn't know what he's doing. And that's the 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 real shitty part part is your mom. Like the owners are literally telling you, Hey, listen, this is we, our son. We, we understand, like, if you guys need us to get him out. Like, yeah, it'd be inhumane to, like, keep him locked up in a cell. But, of course, you need to have, like... A boundary, yeah. Boundaries, yeah. They they understand that, like, people need boundaries. And it's like, yeah, talk to us about it. Exactly this. I don't know why your mom was just like... Now nah, we don't need that. It's cute. It's cute. It's fine. I hate that shit. I At don't know 12, what it is. That's, the, that's what is, like, grossing me out is that you were 12 when this happened. And I'm yeah. sorry. Like, Jesus... And and that's another thing I'm uncomfortably familiar with is like, you know, I've been through situations where old men who are not disabled, uh, it, uh hitting on me, touching me, not inappropriately, but like kind of inappropriately, like, you know, ha- head on the shoulder, hand on the lower back kind of situation. And, um, my mom being like, Bill cute. He likes you. And I'm like, it's a 40 year old man. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's a 40 a year old man. This is a crime. This is a crime. I'm 16. You can't do that. You can't do this. 
so I understand that frustration too and being like overly protective of your own safety now that you're an adult because it's like who is my mom wasn't yeah like Jesus so no one will yeah that's a terrible situation my yeah, guy it's fucked up I'm and sorry no I don't think I think it's less about the guy being disabled and it's more, more about, about your mom your mom just being cool with it yeah that's the fucked up thing <sighs> There was literally there's a there was a system in place that the owners told you about like explicitly like hey listen we understand yeah. like hey like if you guys need us like let's yeah. let us know but no that was not used no Jesus yeah and it's also really fucked up that she only took it seriously when you were sixteen because then that really is like oh, okay I thought this was like kid fun and not you know you, your bodily autonomy is everybody else's when you're under 16 and not a sexual being and then as soon as you turn 16 or uh, yeah. you grow up and you mature then all of a sudden you're a sexual being and now we get to protect you no that's fucking no, you stupid you should be protected like all the time yeah should, yeah that's like yeah no and this fucking... is un unfortunately like a common problem with parents from that are older or just parents in general where they just think like, oh yeah, aunt, my aunt wants to hug little Timmy and he doesn't want it. Well, too bad, little Timmy. You have to hug her. Yeah, go fucking, no, yeah. No, fuck her. Fuck He doesn't want to hug you. Why? What are you teaching your kid? Yeah. Your body is my property whenever I want it. Yeah. Well, that's a good thing. That's a good, good, great thing. There's also Nothing how horrible is going to happen from that. Fucking ableism is, you know, it's like, oh yeah. yeah, fucking yeah. No, you don't have any bodily autonomy uh, for disabled people. And then they just turn around and they're like, I don't like disabled people. <laughs> well, yeah, because you were fucked over by your mother. Yeah, like shit. He didn't fucking know what he was doing. That's the thing. Yeah, like <sighs> fucking... Yeah, it's it's really it's fucked, man. Yeah, your mom is the the asshole here. Yeah, there was a system in place not being used, and that's I fucked think, up, man. If anything, it warrants if you feel like it, hashing it out with your mom, being like, "Hey, listen, do you remember when this happened? And you should have done this." And you know, maybe if she, you know, she's a good mom. Yeah, you need, she needs she to, can say like, "Oh man, I'm sorry." Yeah, there needs to be at least an I apology. didn't know what Holy to do fuck. or something. Yeah, because I can see this being like a really like. <laughs> Like, if she was... At least she did something at 16. Like, maybe she's but just like, like... Yeah, like, it was still four years too late. No, like, yeah, it's yeah. really fucked up. But, like, god damn, man. It's... I mean, yeah. Yeah, you're not the asshole. You're not the asshole. It's very possible she was just like, I don't know what to do. Yeah, and that's, like, still no shitty. Idea. But, like, fuck, It's still man. shitty. She's still fucked up. Which is, like... But you also knew what to do, though. <laughs> there was a right. It's something to like bring up to her and be like, "Hey, what the fuck did you do that?" And she was like, "Oh no, it was fine." If she's it fine, if she's like that, then be like, "Okay, yeah, fuck you, mom. <laughs> yeah, fuck that's you, bullshit. mom. That's fuck fucking bullshit, that. mom." Yeah, no, fucking Jesus, man. That was pretty cool and epic when you got assaulted. <laughs> it was pretty fucking dope. Pretty cool, pretty fun. When you had the little friend dab on him. Gross, mom. Gross. Not good. Fucking. But of, of course this is your life too you know yeah it's yeah so like fucking not the asshole not the asshole not at the all asshole. not the asshole at all <laughs> guys it's really hard to become the asshole after you've been assaulted yes everybody you gotta get a peppered <laughs> oh shit oh fuck oh I just made a fucking funny joke baby you wanna laugh I see it it's coming out yeah assaulted a peppered a relished. Is that a seasoning or is that a fucking sauce? Or is that a fucking condiment? We're not talking about fucking condiments, Josh. We're talking about fucking seasonings, okay? Get on my fucking level. Sarah, what do you want to plug? It's the end of the podcast. You got to plug something. If you want $20, you can DM me <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> don't. Yo, don't bleed don't Sarah do that. guy. I'm not Never gonna... three people she doesn't do it ever <laughs> it's again. That's three people. I'm not giving you guys money. Uh, follow me on Twitter at S Q U I N T O N two seven one. If you ask me for twenty dollars, I'm not giving it to you. That that happened one time. One time, never happening again. Yeah, we are not. We're not benevolent. <laughs> or you have to at least be following me now. You gotta be following now at yeah. least. That's S Q U I N T O N two seven one. And you should follow me on Twitter at Joshua Chilland, a guy nicknamed GC on Twitch. I'll be streaming on Fridays from here on out at from uh probably about I don't know when shit. I have no idea if I have my one on one tomorrow. Yeah, you, you some Fridays I'll stream Someday. from like six to nine. How about that? How about that? Yeah. Six PM, nine PM Eastern time. 
the podcast will say this on Instagram and Facebook, APWSTR on Twitter, TikTok, buy me a coffee, Patreon, uh, fucking keep up to date. We're going to be, we're let's plays are coming out Wednesday and Friday and Fridays on our YouTube, like comment, subscribe, hit the bell, and we'll see you guys in the next one, Ooh. baby. Peace out of Girl Scouts. I mean, isn't, well, mustard seasoning, actually. Mustard can be a seasoning. A, a mustard seed. Yeah, mustard seed, yeah. Mustard seedsoning, yeah. Is that a good joke? Is that you're good smiling. enough? Is you're that smiling. Good? Was I? You're smiling. Was I? <laughs> yeah, you're smiling. Or was that an upside down frown? <laughs> then I was upside down frowning at your joke then. This is actually fat phobic what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> and those of you listening and not watching, you now need to go on YouTube. To you do, because he looked real cute when he did that. Like a little groundhog. Three more weeks of winter. <laughs> so stupid. This is dumb. We're I can't done. Be, I can't We're done. No, that's, that's it. That's the outro. That's it. That's the outro, Fuck, baby. The outro where I look like a fucking idiot. Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs>